<laughs> you want to hear the first disappointing news of the day? Sure. It's it's not a big deal, but it's 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 news to me. I was conned at the grocery store the other day. Conned. Dos Do you That's, see this? What's it, Dos look at how, look at, It looks like a normal sized bottle. Oh, oh, it's not. It's a tiny one. <laughs> Is that like an eight ounce bottle? Yes. They make those tiny ones like the Coronas? It's seven, seven fluid ounces. Wow. And I, I was like, oh man, I was at HEB and I, and I was like, oh, dude. they got great deals on Corona or on Dos Equis here. Dude, what? Little dude. did I realize they weren't real Dos, Dos Equis. Equis. It's more like Uno S Equis. It's more like, yeah, Dos Uno Minis. Equi. <laughs> Uno Equi. Uno Eki donde esta <laughs> cerveza? No say. I don't know enough Spanish to get in on this bit. Yo, come here, Uno. Donde esta la biblioteca? One, ladies and gentlemen. Equis <laughs> <laughs> means X, right? Equis, yeah. Equis, X's, Equis. No sé qué estoy hablando ahora. Than, that's different than aquí, <laughs> which is here, how versus Equis. How much Spanish do you know, Jake? Un poquito. I figure you would know more than a little. Yeah, right? Yo comprendo espanol un poquito. Uh, <laughs> there it is. All right. I mean, your wife's first language is uh, Spanish, isn't it? Yep. Yes, it was. Yep. That's the first language she wrote. It's funny because she um, still to this day, you know, language, like anything, is a lifelong learning process. Mm -hmm. And so still to this day, um, she'll have little phrases in English that she'll use that aren't quite right. <laughs> you know, even though she's been speaking it for 30 plus years. And so it's funny just because like I, I, I realize if I was in her shoes, I'd be the exact same way. There'd probably be things that I would be saying that wouldn't be quite little idioms and stuff, you know, especially English is such a quirky language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just little things with like, are you talking about like, like phrases or like sayings? Yeah. You know, there's all these, there's all these English phrases that we use that we don't think about. Like, um, nip it in the bud, nip it in the bud. <laughs> See, Nico, actually Nico taught me that one the other day. <laughs> I always thought that was nip it in the butt. Yeah. But it's not. Cause it's, it's a, it's a it planting oh, it's a flower, flower thing. Reference. Yeah. 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 Yep. Oh, speaking of which, Nico, do you have any of those like flowers? Green. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, flowers they're like, you, it's like planting foam. It's like green mm -hmm. styrofoam. Yeah, yeah. Do you have a bunch of it? Oh, Not yeah. a bunch of it. Some of okay. it. Okay. For the satisfying render, I want to like cut some of it. Okay. We if have some have... here, I think, at the studio. Do we? Because All right. Well, we've been rolling for the last three minutes, so I'm going to play have. the intro. Play. I literally have Jordan going to pick some up right now. It's just silent. Yeah, it's silent. I can't hear you, Jake. Welcome to the Corridor Cast, where you're gonna have a blast. Oh, he has Welcome noise Welcome to the Corridor Cast. <laughs> Wait, Jake. It's really funny when we really can't hear you talk. <laughs> talk. It's, it's, really <laughs> it's really weird. It's really funny. So, like, <laughs> you're <laughs> strumming, and no noise is coming out. You're just looking so happy about it's strumming and not producing I'm any sure sound. Even playing? Oh, yeah. No. Here, the... let, me see if I can, let me see if I can trick the camera to no. think I'm not playing. No, no, no. It's, an it's, audio it's, filter. It's, it's the audio filter is so good these days that it's li literally filtering out the guitar, but keeping your voice. Yeah, so, <laughs> the, the, yeah. the podcast listeners can hear it. No, that doubt. was wild. But yeah. it's we cannot hear. It, so it just sounds like "Welcome to the podcast." <laughs> <laughs> no, no acoustics. That was crazy. And now we're talking about something I guess the listeners don't get because they heard you just fine. Yeah, they're gonna have your All recorded right, well, audio. I guess this is what it would have. This is what it would have sounded like. <laughs> Welcome to the Corridor cast. We are here to have a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Except you would have been pretending to play the guitar in yeah, the video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Oh, well, man. Well, that's... ruin that intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was a great intro. It was even better. All right. Well, I just got back from the hospital. Yeah, man. Uh... Tell us about that. Wait, what? Yeah, um, not me personally, um, but I had to take my daughter because she's fine, but uh, she was That's on this usually little... why I go to hospitals. <laughs> <laughs> she was on this little horse toy thing. Mm, that like had. the rockers? Got we... Yeah, now this thing, I, 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 I'm going to need to serve justice onto this little horse toy because it, it took my son's tooth <gasps> and, now it's t and now it's taken my daughter's chin because... Uh -oh. <laughs> 
she just uh, was on it and she was just playing on it and she's a little too big for it and I tell her not to play on it but she was playing on it anyways because I was not classic in the room. and uh, and then she tipped forward on it and bonked her chin on the tile and then obviously busted it open so she just had to go get three stitches wow oh man yeah Dang. wow she, that horse it, is out it, for children's blood yeah now she did great the stitches went really well and they did them super the the physician's assistant that did them like she did an amazing job they're super straight very clean and then they dissolve after five days so wow that's that but then we also had to take because jj fell on it like a like almost a year ago and then he had this tooth that was chipped and the and, the, and it was supposed to be fine but it developed like it wasn't it, it developed like a bacteria or something like it wasn't mm. quite it didn't quite heal right so then he had to have his tooth removed and now because oh, of this dang toy horse <laughs> wow well, anyways i suppose jj just has a gap because they're just gonna wait for his adult tooth to come in right yeah, so now he's got this big old funny gap between his teeth. <laughs> Whenever he smiles, he's got this big old missing tooth. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> I can't imagine what that's like for parents. So How like... old is he? He's two and a half. Okay, so not quite at the age where he's losing teeth naturally. Mm. No, yeah, that'll be a few years yet. So he's going to have that gap in his mouth for years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> until, he's in, until he's in like third or fourth grade. Oh, yeah. No. It's funny. It's funny you mentioned that too, because I, as a kid, before I got my adult teeth in, um, I was like trying to do this cool like power slide move on my bike on my like it was like a tricycle bike. That's a uh, and like the older kids were doing it down the steep hill. So I was like, I could do this too. I don't. I don't care. I'm a kid. Dude, I've never tooth. had injuries or problems. So I, I yeah. go down the steep hill and then just immediately like the the bike buckles under me and I hit smack my face like face first on the concrete and I, when i get up my, i think my mom saw this and both of my front teeth were just like dangling out oh, of dangling. The they were just dangling dude just oh. like blood everywhere and oh, yeah no. that was a hospital visit how did, and, how did teeth and, dangle and for about for By about nerves uh, oh. for, for months and months i had these two just missing front teeth and I actually booked a Disney commercial from that, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it was, it was when they did the Star Wars weekends, when they first opened up Star Wars um, at, at uh, like Disney. Like a couple years ago? At, no, at can Disney. We find, uh, wait, can we find a no, photo Disney of World, this? At Disney World, they had like a Star Wars can thing. We, can oh, we yeah. find an official photo of this, please? Oh, my God. Yeah, I'll find it. I'll Matt drag Cairns. it down for this you. This is in Florida and Disney, Disney World in Florida. World. Disney World in Florida, I, I yes. I went to Star Wars there back in the day. Yeah, yeah, because they had, they had the park back there. Yeah, a yeah. long time ago. Um, I did not know. And so, yeah, so I did a commercial. Never been to Disney World. With, uh, I was, like, asking for Darth Vader's autograph, <laughs> and he signed it by sticking his lightsaber through it. So oh, I just really? had this hole in this. You know why they they hired you though, not because they thought the teeth were cute, but because they knew that they wouldn't have to provide dental insurance. <laughs> hey. Yeah, <sure. laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I'm sure that's what it was. That's exactly it. Yeah. And I don't you know why that reminded me. Of, of like I, I got thrown off a bike one time when I was a kid for a very different reason. I was totally fine, so it's like it doesn't end up bad. It's not like I don't have dangling teeth, but this kid threw a broom at my bike, like a spear, like a javelin. Oh no! Oh, and went yeah. straight through my front tire and caught up in the in the spokes and it just stopped my wheel dead and i went diving over the front of the bike and i just remember being so angry i was like you're an idiot like you're out of your mind what'd you think would happen yeah and I, but then at the same time i also can relate because it's like he wasn't thinking sure i do that all the time i will do stuff impulsively without thinking oh, yeah we know the yeah. exact <laughs> same thing yeah. put can a lot of I things in your mouth around that you shouldn't yeah it's because i don't think okay that actually brings something else up there there's what? a uh, there's a crew cuts uh, it's Attack on Titan Crew Cuts on the website uh, for oh, website that, that Odyssey, subscribers. Yeah. Um, the one, I literally like physically gagged when you took a random stray cup of coffee oh. and drank it. You oh, know oh. those, but for anyone who isn't aware, <laughs> there are just random mugs throughout this this office full of just <laughs> nasty, rank old coffee. 
that sometimes <laughs> do you know better too, Ren? You know better than to drink stray coffee that's been sitting out for days. I will say that I think Daniel embellished the sound design around that oh, a definitely. little bit. Yeah, uh, but you did drink it though. I I did sip it. Oh, I did God. it just like a little, Shoot. just enough to prove that some of it so went in my gross. mouth, and it was it was just cold it's coffee. So I have no idea whose it was. It was probably Christians or Deans from oh, VFX Arts React, like the previous it. week. Yeah, Christians <laughs> claiming the coffee. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just it's more about like what I pictured. Maybe it wasn't that gross, but just moldy coffee. I've gotten good at being able to do really gross things in as not a gross way as possible. Mm, okay, so you don't die or something. Yeah, like when I ate those Twizzlers that were out in the street puddle. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I didn't Ugh. eat them. I just bit them and just like made a show for camera and then spat yeah, them out but you immediately. Still so got gross. that bacteria in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. YOLO. Yeah. Dude, the Hunter Street juice, man. Stunts. I got, I got an infected Hunter's... wound because of Hunter Street juice, man. You can't. It was it was it was fresh after a rain. It was so diluted of fresh water, and it was just like a little bit of water in my mouth, and I spat it out instantly. It's like not that big of a deal. No. It improved my immune system. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to convince me of that. <laughs> no, no way. Hey, but to, to go back to that bike flipping over the front thing that happened to me when I was like, oh. I don't know, probably eight or so. And I still have a scar. I don't know. Whoa, if you guys, really? I, I, I thought you're going to get a scar. Usually that's how know, people break their might, clavicles. Oh yeah, I can't, can't see my it. My hair might be too. Yeah, I think it's a little too long. long. Yeah, I can't see it. I, I see hair. Okay. There is. When my hair is short, there is, there is still a scar on the back of my really? head from it. Yeah. Wow. So, like, Dang. what? You, did you get a concussion or something? Like, what? What happened? I was riding my bicycle, and I thought that it would be a great idea to try to use a large rock that was in the road as a <laughs> jump. <laughs> right on. Right on. I'm just gonna hit this rock. And, that'll work. And and I hit rock that ramp. rock, and it did not work as a win. <laughs> And instead, my bike went like that, and my my body went over the front of it, and I just remember waking up in a puddle of my own blood. Oh, oh no! What? Wait, how and old I, were you? I, I was like eight or nine. Okay, okay. And I and I stumbled back to my house with blood all over myself, and my sister saw me like because we lived in this rural like development, yeah. and my sister saw me from like down the road like walking with like a zombie with blood on myself and she came <laughs> running out because my, my parents weren't home at the time and she was seven years older than i was so oh, she wow, was yeah. watching us um and uh yeah that was uh that was <laughs> she's like incident. oh no i'm responsible for the zombie <laughs> coming down the street <laughs> <laughs> yeah thankfully i was fine but um man yeah Dang. there was uh mm -hmm. there was this blood stain on the road until they repaved it. Oh man! Really? Whoa! Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Man, this just turned into like personal. Injury I was about to say, I was like, Nico, yeah, do you have like a bike crash any, story? Like, I mean, I have. Like, Did you ever fall off of a bicycle as a kid? No, I've never crashed really hard on a bicycle to the point where I have like a story about. Well, crazy Nico, there's scars. still time. Ugh, man, I you got that new electric happen. bike. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of getting into electric bikes. Um, I think it's the next bug that's biting me. Really? <laughs> so yeah. Mm, cool. The idea did you get did you go for assisted power or well, regular motor? It's you basically have two options when it comes to an electric bike. You either have the motor in the back tire or the motor in the middle with the pedals. They both kind of have their own perks. If the motor's in the middle with the pedals, um, you know, it's going to make your pedals go around, but it, you then get to utilize the whole gear system after the motor to influence that motor's power. So you can put that motor's power towards torque for like really steep hill climbs, or you can put it towards you know, basically cruise and go to your top gear. Um, yeah, and top speed. Top speed, yeah. And then it also... But no it, torque. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but no torque. Um, so you can't, like, climb a hill necessarily in your top gear, unless it's a really powerful motor. Um, and supposedly the weight's better, too. If it's in your back tire, it's a little bit easier to maintain, I guess. Um, and, like, it's a little bit of a smoother ride. Uh, but there's no, like, there's no gears to after that. Usually, oh, yeah, uh, also, motors yeah, significantly the wheels cheaper. are um, little cheaper motors. Yeah. Um... But the, uh, you know, the, you're going to get that power output of the motor and that's it. Um, so I actually ended up picking up an electric mountain bike like two weeks ago. Um, it was just like an all in one thing, just from like a little like e-bike distributor down in, in Downey actually, Jake. <laughs> um, nice. And it's Where cool. Jake used to live. <laughs> yeah. Where Jake used to live. It has a 350 watt rear hub motor. And now all the one wheel in that we've done, like I'm starting to wrap my head around these. So like the first one wheel was a 500 watt motor. And the XR is a 750 watt motor, I believe. Um, so this bike has a 350 watt motor 
and it's cool. I really like it. You can go super fast, but when you're climbing a hill, you still have to put like 10% of your effort into mm, it, mm. which sounds like I shouldn't be complaining at all, but part <laughs> of me really wants the experience of t- like total power, right? Yeah, the ability to yeah. like climb anything with a Total this power. Total power. It's a mountain bike. Well, I mean, uh, you can get like electric dirt bikes like what Sam has, that stir on. Yeah. That thing but is those crazy. are heavy. It's those like, are heavy. That's yeah. 110 pounds. Um, by the way, funny story. I, I was actually looked that bike up. They're Segway bikes now. Because so yeah, uh, Segway Nine Bot, I think, is the company that yeah, produces so the Suron originals. Suron and Segway are actually both, I think, subsidiaries are owned by another company, which makes a lot of electric vehicles. And they bought Segway back in like a few years ago. Um, so they just rebranded their Suron bikes as Segway bikes. And it's the exact same thing that they're now selling under the Segway brand. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. that's it's interesting about that, too, because it's like. Uh, I was talking with the Flux Movement guys with the shop in mm-hmm. in Little Tokyo. There, they have one in the in their window. In the window, yeah. Uh, and they want to be able to sell them, but apparently, uh, Suron or or at least Suron the, as the subsidiary brand has an exclusive distribution deal with this other company in LA for like all of California or mm. something like that. And so, like, they actually can't sell those bikes, huh? Mm. Even though they want to, they just put a little for sale sticker in like the corner. They screw it. They could, they could <laughs> sell it for cash. Yeah. 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 Then, then they'll get more. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I, uh, but but it, I think so what Jake was do- asking, though, is like, do you have to pedal in order to make it move? Or do, is there a throttle where you don't have to pedal at all? Uh, I think for mid drive ones where like the motors on the pedal, I think you have to pedal. I could be wrong, but I think you have to pedal. The thing is like. That's well, that's the way that the one that I got for that video that we did way back in the day mm-hmm. where I biked to work for a week. Mm-hmm. That's th- that one's is assisted power in the middle, and I think I really yours like was still a hub I motor still though. Use it. Nice. I think I don't think it was a mid drive motor though, Jake. I th- but I think no, it is. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's got a little box, and there's nothing on the the, the back wheel is just a regular wheel. That would be a mid drive. Okay, yeah. sure. I I rented a mid drive mountain bike actually like a month and a half ago, uh-huh. and that was a mid drive, and that is that had a 250 watt motor for its mid drive. And that was able to get me up like really steep inclines with pretty much zero effort, just making Mm. the pedals go around as long as it was in in the lowest gear. But the Mm. bike I'm looking at now is a 1600 watt mid drive. Oh, (laughs) I I spent, I I was there a while back where I was like really seriously looking into electric bikes. Like I really wanted to have like a nice, like full suspension mountain bike that was able to go 30 to 50 miles on a charge and like, you know, thousands of Watts and whatever. But then I just kind of realized, okay, I'm looking at thousands of dollars now, like minimum three to $5,000 for these bikes that I'd like to have. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Or I can just keep doing what I love a lot already, which is one wheeling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's the that's an interior conflict I'm struggling with right now. <laughs> it's like I, I might buy an electric motorcycle. Oh, there's a couple out there that I really am intrigued by, but I've had to give up the idea and pursuit of motorcycles in general. Yeah. I don't I don't like being around cars. That's so, so, yeah. this, so, it, the risk factor is very high yeah so even if electric- you are perfectly safe it's like you are still content and this is obviously the argument around motorcycles as old as time it's like you know you're exposed it's not exactly up to you it could be up to someone else whether or not yeah, you live or yeah. die and yeah. electric motorcycles are quiet they don't hear you coming oh yeah especially if you're splitting mm. traffic like there's been a few times where like i'll start changing lanes and realize i hear that faint sound of yeah. a motorcycle splitting lanes where they literally drive for all of you guys who do not live in California, this is a thing here. It's not yeah, a thing yeah. pretty much anywhere else. It's like fully legal. You can drive right down the middle of lanes, and motorcycles do it all the time. And it's, it's scary when if you start in the middle of lanes. You don't mean in the middle of the lane. You mean oh, in sorry, between yeah. lanes. Yeah. On the line. The, on, on the, the line. lane line. You're driving on the lane line. Yeah. Uh, and it's great for traffic. If you got stop and go traffic, motorcycles can get up to the front. That's nice. But like if you're going highway speeds, they'll still split traffic. And if you start shifting lanes, I've been there where I hear the motorcycle and I'm like, wait a minute. And I, I double check further back and it's like, they're not right behind me, but they're coming up quick and I have to be able to swerve back into my lane. And they go by. I always like try to give them room too. Whenever they go by, they always go like, they wave, you know, they do oh, a little okay. wave. Yeah. But electric yeah. bikes, you can't hear them. And so I've, I'm deathly afraid of accidentally hitting an electric bicycle in my car. Sorry, mm. electric motorcycle yeah. in my car on yeah. the highway. Okay, so an electric motorcycle versus an electric bike. The bikes have the pedals, and that, that means they're like, there's some kind of legal thing. It's, it's, with that. There's a lot of legality aspects. There's not too much different between an electric bicycle and an electric motorcycle. It's all mm-hmm. just the components involved and the power output. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. And then, so, but like, if you have pedals on your electric bike, 
then you don't have to like register it and get insurance. Is um, that part I don't know of it, about or? registration, but the reason why Sam has pedals on his Suron bike is to specifically keep it at a classification level. I think a level two. Whereas if he took the pedals off and put like pegs on mm. it, it would become a level three certification electric bike, oh. and then that requires a whole different. I don't know what in, is involved. Okay, but it in, involves something. Okay. Mm. It's one of those things. Yeah. It doesn't matter to anyone unless you're actually trying to do it, and then you just do the googling. For all of you who are like, I don't know, it doesn't matter to you. Don't worry you about it. You do the googling. You do the Google dance, and then you know what classification your pegs yeah. and pedals are. <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> like electric bikes with uh, pedals are not allowed to go over a certain speed. I want to say something like twenty five miles an hour. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But now electric motorcycles. Electric motorcycles are full motorcycle licensed yeah, vehicles. Okay. Those are Teslas for motorcycles. And those will go incredibly fast and they have incredible acceleration because they've got huge like oh, 10,000 sure. watt motors on them. It's, yeah. they've got, it's like being on a jet engine. It's, yeah. It's oh. Like the torque and it's that's so you can't lane split here. You can obviously do it in California. It's a little bit safer, I guess. Mm. Um, in Texas. But, <laughs> yeah. You, but you just the, the, country I, the idea of. Yeah, and th there, there's less people on the roads generally, um, so I, I'm I'm more inclined than I would have been. But um, man, just the idea of like riding on top of this <laughs> basically, you're just sitting on top of this motor that has torque that is just <laughs> like it. The torque is yeah, just insane. amazing. It's it, like I mean, you guys both have Teslas. And, yeah, and it's even insane. in those, you go, I want to be there. Boom. You're yeah. there. I have you know? the slow Tesla. <laughs> I literally have yeah. the slowest Tesla they make, and it is still stupidly fast. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Like, Tesla have made it so, like, if somebody's like, says, like, I have a fast car and it's a gas powered car, it's just like, you don't have the fastest car. You don't. <laughs> yeah. And it's also you this, don't. like, I don't care about speed. I care about acceleration. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not a fan of noises, so I'm not a fan of loud acceleration. You know, it's like, Look at this thing. The control, the control you have is just so amazing. And yeah, then with the it's such with clean the control response too. time. Yeah, yeah, the response, the bra the braking that you can have, just with how far you're pushing down. Oh, I rarely use my brake pedal. I assume right. you're probably yeah, the same. You're single the, pedal driving. Every car needs to have like the brake built into the gas pedal. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's, it's like I nice let up thing. on the accelerator and I start slowing down. Like I just applied the brakes, and you just learn to modulate that to a point where like I almost never take my foot off the accelerator. Oh well. Yeah. Well, like it, it, I, I take it off to brake if I need to brake really quickly. All gas, no brakes. All gas, All gas no brakes. <laughs> Ren drives where he never touches the brakes. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, yeah, I mean, electric motors have max torque at zero speed. Mm, like well. torque wears off the faster you go. That's why nose diving is such a thing on, on one wheeling. The faster you go, the less torque it has. Eventually, it doesn't have any torque at all, and you just teeter over. Hmm. Um, you know, the, the, like, the thing about electric motors that like, doesn't get talked about a bunch. People, I mean, people mention it here and there is like how quiet they are. And that's something like riding this electric bike a couple of times. It's like, you would need to be on a motorcycle or a moped for that kind of experience. And just realizing that like at, at will, I can turn on a motor that is completely silent and then turn it off again. And there's another sport that, um, I heard people exploring that. And I'm, I haven't checked recently to see how far they've gotten, but, uh, paragliding where you have the, or paramotor paragliding, paramotor. where you have the, uh, the motor on your back. You know, previously, you know, be, yeah. be loud and yeah. noisy, but if you had one that was battery powered, you can hit that. And once you're up in the air and you're kind of sailing, just don't hit gas and then it's quiet. You get to enjoy the quiet of flying Ooh. with the wind. I mean, even with the gas paramotors, they turn off. They've got like quick starters on them. Yeah. Um, and the energy density isn't quite there yet for the electric ones. I, I This is actually something I legitimately <laughs> looked into because I was thinking about a quarter crew video for it. Mm. And it's just that uh, been one intense quarter crew video. Yeah. yeah and, but like people have already like designed and built battery powered versions of these. I think Peter Stre Streepel even did something like this. Uh no, I, I you know he just actually builds airplanes. Um, but <laughs> yeah, paramotoring is something that I've like I got like really interested in. There's this name, there's this guy named Tucker Gott with a great YouTube channel, paramotoring. He like he'll go up and like go down to like McDonald's and get drive through and then like <laughs> fly up and way back to his house, That's stuff amazing. like that. Uh, but yeah, the electric aspect to that is the dream, right? Mm -hmm. It's like it's super quiet while you're going, and then you just turn it off at a moment's notice. It's like way more efficient than gas. Yeah. It's just you you require like literally these huge battery bricks, and you need like six of them. Oh yeah, and, the weight and of then that's it still gives nuts. you like a little bit of flight time. Yeah. yeah. And they're expensive. They're dangerous. 
Uh, you can yeah, hunt it's, it's with a whole it, thing. Though. And then, I don't know, that was another thing that I think I ended up having to kind of give <laughs> up just because. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? That would be like so OP. <laughs> like, they can't hear you coming. Just <laughs> 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 well, uh, oh my God, I'm literally <laughs> blanking on his name right now Silences. from uh, King of Randomness. Died on a paramotor. Yeah. Recently, yeah. like a year or two ago. Yeah. Grant. Yeah. Grant. Yeah. And that was that was really sad. He I liked his videos and he had gotten into paramotoring and I still don't know if they know exactly what happened, whether it was some sort of like shoot malfunction or motor malfunction or he just kind of came in too hot at that. Like I don't know. Um but he died and that's it's tragic. Yeah. Know? And it's because it's like, you know, he was doing something that is inherently like that level of risk like one wheeling is risky yeah. but at the same time if something fails you're not falling ten thousand feet out of the sky yeah yeah um you also don't have to like land <laughs> right right <laughs> it's not a part where you have to make contact with the ground once it's, more yeah that. it's so interesting because like skydiving you know you think of skydiving as being incredibly dangerous and yet then you read the stats like the risk or the danger of actually dying from skydiving is so low. And that's because the only people skydiving are incredibly well trained. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't change the fact that, you know, something could go wrong. The consequences are very high. The, exactly. The stakes yeah. are high where it's like perhaps not high risk, but the stakes are very high. I saw I saw a chart that broke down risk into two axes. And one was the, I know the, exact right the severity of the consequences and the likelihood of it going wrong. And as long as you're not fulfilling two of those things, it's it's low to medium risk. But once you're fulfilling two of those things, it's high risk. So like if something has a chance of going wrong, a high chance of going wrong, but the consequences are really minor, whatever. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. who cares? Something has severe consequences, but has a very low chance of going wrong. Say flying an airplane. It's still kind of whatever. I mean, it feels dramatic. You're like, Ugh. but still at the end of the day, low risk. But once you start blending those two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once you're like, I have Ride a high likelihood lightning. of messing this up and yeah. I might die. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, that, it's funny you mentioned that graph. A friend of mine, uh, literally his work is based around that graph. He's, oh, yeah. uh, what, what is his job title? He works at, he's an engineer at JPL. Mm -hmm. Uh, his name is Bob Akfordosi. He's actually the, the famous Mohawk dude from, from NASA. If you've ever seen the curiosity landing, he had the Mohawk. Anyway. Oh, was he the um, guy with the crazy shirt? Crazy shirt? I don't know about the shirt. <laughs> oh, no, that was the comment landing. I mean, if he's got a mohawk, he probably has a crazy shirt <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. No, he's it's usually pretty, it's like, straight, well-dressed. Anyway, uh, he does, like, a lot of, not necessarily failure analysis, but that t risk analysis type mm -hmm. planning for these Mars missions. Uh, you know, he's been at JPL for, I don't know, 15 years at this point. Uh, and so he's not working on Mars anymore. I think he's working on Io? I'm, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> One of the moons, right? And... It, a lot of what they do is just kind of evaluate risk and they specifically use that graph because he, he shared that graph on Twitter one day and wrote this whole like thread about it. And I found it just super fascinating about how you actually calculate and measure risk because it's, it's risk is something that feels so intangible. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know, it's sketchy, I guess. But like, how bad can it be? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so. Sketchy, kind of sketchy really sketchy <laughs> but it's like it's, it's multiple <laughs> different like extremely sketchy yeah. that's yeah. what you have to do when you get insurance like how sketchy is this guy <laughs> <laughs> but it's you like sketch, sketch analysis. analysis but it's not necessarily a sketching it could be low sketchiness but if the stakes are so high like yeah this is something that will probably not fail but once we send it out into space and out to Jupiter there's nothing we can do we gotta make sure it's like quadruple redundant mm -hmm. even though it's a simple little yeah. thing so that's why everything always gets so over engineered it's because they have to be so they call this the uh, the sketch steak analysis <laughs> sketch steak <laughs> analysis the sketch steak yeah. analysis yeah. and how high are the stakes <laughs> <laughs> sketch versus steak <laughs> yeah your sketch fence is pretty high there I see it's got the white pickets and uh, it's pretty <laughs> sketchy Yep. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Nico, back to your electric bicycle. Yeah. So are you going to, where did, where did you leave this sort of analysis? You, you have a 350 watt motor now. A 350 watt motor on an e-bike uh, e with a, a rear drive motor. It's cool, but it's not quite the power I want. Maybe a little light on range, but better than the XR. Um, so I can't complain that much. And I'm also a little worried about the bike itself being a little on the cheap end for the frame. Once you start like hitting some hills or like, honestly, it's for riding in the mountains that are literally all around LA. 
well, tangent. We're taking another tangent here, real quick. Uh, <laughs> I want to talk about briefly the mountains around LA. Uh, okay. yeah, because yeah, everybody yeah. thinks of LA as a crazy city and it's dusty and grimy and smells like pee and all that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> which it does. Which it does. <laughs> unless you just Sometimes. tell you're in the mountains. Unless you go in the mountains. And here's the thing the mountains are like literally in the city. Yeah. Like Griffith Park is a mountain. It's a giant mountain, too. It's <laughs> like it's a big area. Yeah. It is. And then if you just go a little bit out, there's another huge mountain range called Verdugo, or yeah. it's called something else, but we call it Verdugo. I think it's for the Verdugo Mountain Range. Verdugo, Verdugo yeah. Mountain Range. And then there's, right next to that is the San Rafael Hills. Yeah, and just like those little hills. And then right up against all of it, the the Angeles Forest. Yeah, San forest. Bernardino Mountains and the San Gabriel Mountains and all that stuff. It's it's massive. There are big, big mountains. Those are the very mountains close that to the city. Create the Mojave Desert. Like those are the mountains that create the entire mm -hmm. Southwest United States desert. Wow. Like, yeah. I mean that line, you know, that mm -hmm. goes down yeah. through there. Yeah. Cause they stop, I guess, weather. Yeah. They're, they're big. <laughs> they, stop the the they stop all the moisture from, from moving. Past. That's why the Los Angeles basin is, is different because all the moisture comes in from the ocean lands there. doesn't go into the desert. Yeah. And, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, these mountains <clears throat> they are pretty great. They're, we pretty hit great. them all the time. Um, so your bike, let me, I'm going to see if I can paint a mental picture of what I envision Nico is going through right now. <laughs> He's liking these bikes. They're pretty fun. So it, it's comfortable being stable on a bicycle and having it propel you, but you want to go up these mountains and you want to do it with speed. With speed and with, I mean, with the blessings of what, like the promise of the technology of bicycle, like <laughs> the bicycle I've heard is like the most efficient machine ever made. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not. But I like the saying, because at the end of the day, as far as something turning human power into like go power, they're amazing and they're light. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is the one wheel is the best thing since the bicycle <laughs> 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 and the bicycle has, serves purposes. That the one wheel can't the bicycle is more stable. It's more all terrain mm -hmm. and go faster at, at a fundamental level. The one wheel requires power in order mm. to go. A bicycle is stable with no power input. Very true. Mm -hmm. Bicycle also lets you not put 100 percent of your attention into riding. There's time, sure. like if you're doing aggressive stuff, you can still be at like 90% because you got two wheels that are going to kind of balance you, you know? The one wheel, if you're doing aggressive stuff, you got to be, you yeah. got to be in. Um, which is why I do it though. You know, it's like, I want, I like that feeling. I yeah. like being locked in. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so I want to be able to do these mountains. I don't want the bike to be too heavy. And I've been doing research and electric mountain bikes are disappointingly expensive. <laughs> like Ren hmm. mentioned they're this in the beginning. They're like... Like it starts like five thousand dollars and goes up from there. And it's like Jesus. If you want a decent one, yeah, and I'm not saying one. a good one. I'm saying a decent one. Yeah, they look cool. Once you get to that price range, all of them look freaking sweet. <laughs> yeah. Too bad I I don't care about aesthetics as much as utility. Yeah. <laughs> so right. one of the best things about LA is it's Craigslist. LA has the best Craigslist I think in the world. Maybe mm. New York is like the second best. Or the, maybe the best the Craigslist place. since MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> you can find anything or anyone on Craigslist in LA. Oh yeah, I bought my hand pan on Craigslist. Like that's right, your custom built my one. first one. My oh, custom one I got second after I, I also happened to discover there's a hand pan maker in LA. Once again, it's a little you know same thing. It's it bring let's you have interesting people doing interesting <laughs> things I guess. But uh, so I looked up on Craigslist you know electric uh, electric mountain bikes. And of course, there's people that are just reselling stuff. But there's a guy who makes electric mountain bikes where he gets a nice electric mountain bike or he gets a nice mountain bike frame, just a normal frame and he retrofits it with the, the drives. And he's done like 400 of them at, by this point. Oh, wow. Um, so you basically can get a really high end power customized mountain bike, but you supply the frame. Basically it's like he, he has ones that he recommends <clears throat> cause he's like, he has all the parts that can fit them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's kind of just a standard thing but yeah you just it's up to you how nice the bike do you want it to be how nice come how nice of components do you want and then he'll take it and just slap the the mid drive thing on it and you're good to go wow dang okay wow. that seems like a great idea yeah or a great avenue because what? uh you were talking about earlier that the problem with the more affordable bikes is that the 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 simple components on them are dirt cheap yeah in terms of quality like we're talking like nuts and screws and little like stuff hinges to fail if you're going down a hill they like, all fail and that's the number yeah. one thing and so like uh the experiences i've read about people who've gone through all of this where they've gone through multiple not just like electric bikes but bikes in general it's like what you're paying for with an electric or with a nice bike is the quality parts that go from the top to bottom like yep. all of the parts it might be a good frame it might have good shock absorbers might have good handlebars or whatever but like the you know there might be some 
problem with like some other thing that's kind of critical to making the whole bike run <laughs> and if that thing breaks now you got to fix it and that's the problem that sam's been facing with his suron bike is that he mm. keeps having all these cheap little parts break on him mm. and then his bike can't he can't use it until he fixes that one thing and that's happened half a dozen half a dozen times mm. yeah like yeah. it's like uh that's the thing about the one wheel parts typically don't break on it <laughs> yeah it's, it's true durable and if they do break it's kind of just like oh you just need to resolder this connection it's not oh, i gotta buy another chip or mm. another thing to drop mm. in or yeah. another little the problems know. that happen with the one wheel are like they're really niche problems like <laughs> yeah. oh you're trying to like go over too big of a jump which n almost no one's gonna be doing so you <laughs> blew out the tire seal or uh you tried to <laughs> You rocked it a little too hard going down the hill, and now like the little solder pin is coming Speaking loose. So you gotta like resolder it. Right? <laughs> yeah, of course yeah. I am. <laughs> yeah, these are run problems. <laughs> sure. I guess I'd like to put a question out there for any listeners who ride mountain bikes. Uh, how much of a difference does it make to have rear suspension on your bike? To anybody who's riding, bikes? I've always heard rear suspension is harder if you're trying to like go uphill or just typical riding because it absorbs some of your energy from every yes. time you like press down but that will no longer be yeah. an issue for me if there's an electrical motor i mean yeah pushing that i am more of a fan of just having a softer ride mm -hmm. yeah i mean me too it's just it's expensive it and is, a little yeah. bit heavier because that's the other really cool thing it is heavier yeah like the suron is like 110 pounds like the cheapo electric mountain bike i have is only 65 pounds and if i went this route of having this guy retrofit a bike it's gonna be like 50 pounds and yeah. like to have that kind of like sprint energy in a 50 pound bike like you can zip like taking that out to like the desert like mountains and canyons yeah, and just wow. zipping mm -hmm. on that thing wow. would be sick there's something Carbon that fiber. is inherently yeah. safe there, if you feel safe when you're going fast on a bike mm -hmm. and it's and it's a strange feeling because when you're going fast on any other vehicle a skateboard or one wheel or whatever it, like it feels way more sketch mm -hmm. but there's something about the stability of a bicycle when you're going, you know, over 20 miles an hour. Let's say like 25, 30. Yeah. Uh, nothing like dangerously fast, but like you, this is this is pretty fast. You, you feel yeah. you feel fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's because you have a lot of your body connected to the yeah. the vehicle. You know, you got your hands on the bars. Yeah. You're, I wonder how much of it also plays into the fact that like we all learned how to ride bikes at a young age, and so yeah. it's just like it's so ingrained in our like brains how to do yeah. bikes. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. You think it's like even older than that, though? Like humans riding horses and stuff like that. Mm, yeah, I think it's just fun to mess with our like inertial computers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love doing that. <laughs> humans love doing that. Yeah, man, y'all are making me want to get a bike. <laughs> I've already thought about it too. So this, this a is bike a... in LA is really good to have. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Some I'm, sort of I'm... like non-car transport. Because like this. I'm like obviously I'm a huge proponent of one wheeling, but more than that, I'm a huge proponent of personal electric vehicles. Yeah, I feel like if everyone really just got on board with the idea of just like having an electric bike or something like that, Scooter, instead of like yeah. driving their car the one and a half miles down to the street to the grocery store just to pick up a soda yeah. or, mm -hmm. you know, insert whatever. And, and then go back. It's like, yeah. you, you really don't need to do that. And, yeah, and right. it's so much easier on your, your peace of mind to not have to worry about parking, to not yeah. have to work like sure. be stuck in traffic. And there's so many options now. And, tremendous yeah. number of options. Plus it's nice yeah. just being outside. It's nice being exposed to the outdoors like that. Even if it is in the middle of a city. Okay, Nico. So now I'm in the market for an electric bike. Um, <laughs> what uh, this is a real question? What what was the price difference to for the Craigslist guy with that could attach these motors? The, the price versus... difference of the Craigslist guy to like um like getting a brand name, a, like American brand electric bike or like a European brand electric bike bike is probably about a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Wow. Maybe even more than that. Like cheaper or like that's for the same specs or I guess. No, not even the same specs. For the same specs, you're, you're probably looking at like a two thousand dollar gap between this guy and Craigslist, and like getting the thing name wow. brand. So yeah. that's a pretty big price that makes sense to me. You have to link that guy to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely considering it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, there are areas where DIY is always going to be cheaper, but there are areas where like just buying a product is going to be far better for for you and everyone involved yeah. than to do it DIY. But mm -hmm. like electric bikes is still definitely in that category of like, if you know what you're doing and you can get solid parts and it, like the tech. The idea behind the technology is is the simplest thing. Like literally when I did that electric bike video, it's like you have power, you have control, and you have motor. 
<laughs> Put them together and you have e-bike. It's like it's, it's the exact same technology that's an electric skateboard. It's the same exact technology that's an electric car. It's just different pieces of the same puzzle. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess the yeah, last that. Yeah. The last thing I'd no, have to ahead. say about the, the bike thing, just to kind of wrap up your question too, Matt, and anybody else listening who's now like, man, I want to get an e-bike. <laughs> uh, and we're talking about. I've been talking about mountain bikes now. If you're just looking for like an electric bike, uh, there's actually a ton of decently priced electric bikes basically yes. coming out of china because china's having like a huge okay. electrical bike revolution right yeah. now um they even like, had a weird thing where they're producing way too many and they're throwing like literally thousands of them in a landfill <laughs> it was a weird time they're like we can't have this yes. <laughs> I, I, I hope that's over i'm pretty sure it's over i'm pretty sure that's over too at this point there's like a lot a of people importing them into america everybody slaps some funky modern brand yeah. name on it yeah. whatever so you can get like a real nice like street cruiser, even with like front suspension for like, you know, between probably eight hundred dollars and fourteen hundred dollars. Oh, oh cool. you can get a nice e-bike for five hundred. Yeah. 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 Like like decent. And what I was saying, like with the commercial thing, if you're wanting to just get an affordable e-bike, it's way better just to buy one of these bikes yeah. uh, because it's going to deliver 85, 90 percent of the experience that you would want to have. Yeah. With like zero effort. Okay. You can go pick up groceries <laughs> with it. You can get to friends places with yeah. it. It's like, like yeah. Nico is yeah. literally specifically talking about a very niche desire mountain here of like, bike, sure, you sure. want a rugged mountain yeah. bike that can that handle can, speed and power and durability. Something that can hang with the one wheel, you know, something that's like, okay. let's go out to the mountains, mm -hmm. which are in our backyard because I enough people appreciate the mountains in LA. Let's go into the True. mountains and like play in those trails, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but that's definitely a different ride than <laughs> going yeah, down, yeah, into downtown. Is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with yeah. like buying a regular bike bicycle. It's like you can go to a bike shop and spend five thousand dollars on this special titanium frame or carbon fiber frame that is like, wow, I can lift it with my pinky. That's crazy. Which is crazy. It is crazy. <laughs> but I'm also just like, not my thing. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care about nice bikes. I mean, I I like the idea of them, but I I just I'm not enough of a cyclist to see the value in something so expensive but you can buy a bicycle for like a hundred bucks yeah that works about as well as the other bike it does all the same yeah. things technically if you're mark them off on a checklist mm -hmm. yeah mm. <laughs> there there's that one it's saying though there's that one saying which i always come back to when it comes to things in your life that you are going to spend a little bit of extra money on things that go between you and the ground yep <laughs> yeah <laughs> damn right shoes yeah. mattresses tires Etc. Yeah. Bikes, bicycles, yeah. one wheels. <laughs> yeah. yeah, words to live by. And just to comment on the simplicity of electric motors, when we were getting really into building stuff during the vlog days, uh -huh. I, I was looking into building an electric motor in a concept. A motor, oh, just a straight up motor. Interesting. Yeah, because they're so simple. You just need magnet. <laughs> And you need copper. You need and the magnet. <laughs> then you yeah. need the copper. <laughs> you need, that is, it's literally like you that's all you magnet. need. You I mean, the, 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 the challenging yeah. part there uh, is the winding of the right. copper. That there's yeah. an actual like intricate, complicated like pattern that you have to do. Oh, and really? then, yeah. great, you've built a motor, but now you actually need a special control system to be able to like fire electrons through it at the precise like timing to get it to move right it obviously gets more and more complex but like just in in the the theor the theory mm -hmm. of it you know is so simple a brush motor is simpler though than a brush motor is way simpler but they don't they have a lot more problems because a brush motor like the motors in a nerf gun for instance uh, it's based off of just pure electricity. You plug it into some power and the more power you supply it, the faster it goes because like the actual <laughs> brush inside of it makes contact. Mm -hmm. So they wear down over yeah. time. A brushless yeah. motor cannot wear down because there's no contact other than the bearing bearings wear down over time. Yada, yada. <laughs> that actually is really interesting. I didn't know that, but it's, it's funny because the, the fundamental concept is the copper when affected by a magnet wants to move. And so as long as you can keep the copper moving and connect the moving copper to something like a like a drive shaft, you know, all of a sudden have power. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, it's I wild. Mean, there's this, expand upon it a little I bit. I mean, OK, <laughs> Jake is for the most part entirely correct there. But it's like what happens is that when you actually supply power to it. Wow. Uh, when you supply power <laughs> to uh, electric. Sorry. To the coils in the copper, it creates a magnet magnetic field and that pushes mm -hmm. against the permanent magnets on the stator mm -hmm. uh 
So it's like and then it moves and then the power shifts and it shifts the magnetic field, right? Like it turns off and on and off and imagine, on. Imagine imagine uh, you're on a pirate ship or some mm. classic ship, right? And you've a got like the, the giant like wheel, the horizontal wheel that everyone's pushing on in a circle. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? On a pirate ship? On a, a, I don't know, like a, a ship. horizzontal yeah. wheel. I don't they, know. This they, yeah, they like, have them. Like they, imagine they use, like a wind they, windmill, like something that you got to turn, and okay. it's got like all they these hooks gotcha, sticking out of it. Sail, like a, they use like them in to a hoist mill. sail and open yeah. latches and stuff. Yeah, the donkey going in the circle on the mill. So basically, you have three teams of pushers pushing mm-hmm. this this wheel. You have like three dudes with the blue jerseys, three dudes with the red jerseys, three dudes with the green jerseys, and they're all spaced out one after another. Ble- uh, red, blue, green, red, blue, green, and uh, they can only move when someone yells their name. Mm-hmm. And so the red guys are like, they hear red, and they're like, oh, and they push just for a moment, and then they stop, and then someone else, and then someone else, uh, then the blue guys hear their name, blue, mm-hmm. and then they push. And basically, it's just those three teams pushing, just, oh, just those three teams pushing for a slight moment, one after another, over and over and over again. So the electricity is basically the copper wires. There's like multiple clumps that are wired up and they each turn on and basically sequence? yes okay so yeah that's the idea is that you have base essentially three different patterns of coils going around this stator here and they each get a little bit of electricity for a moment they fire up produce a magnetic field and that magnetic field pushes on the magnets uh, of this of the stator which begins to turn but then as it's pushing away the other magnet is now coming in and if they held on to that power it would, it would the magnet would then stop because yeah. it's now pushing against that magnetic field, the same one mm. that pushed the original mm-hmm. magnets away. So they turn off, and then at the perfect time, they turn off the next set. The green dudes turn on, and they're in the perfect position to be able to push it again. And so that's what the electronic speed controllers are doing. They're just firing at thousands of times per second, one after another, to make that thing turn. And they're able to do it so fast that they can modulate the acceleration of that turning and whatnot. Hmm. It's, it's super fascinating. That's, that's why the motors inside of those stators that Ren is talking about are always in like a clover form. Hmm. Okay. Because each one of those is different. Mm-hmm. And and so th- those create that magnetic field, which is opposing the magnetic field of the stator. And so it's, it, it's, and it's just constantly doing that. But it's just, it's wild to think like, it's just using the power of magnetism to it's- drive this thing. And electromagnetism. It's yes, basically anti gravity yes. from sci fi films, except it ended up being on a smaller scale than we thought, so we used it in motors. <laughs> but it is invisible forces acting on each yeah, other, yeah. which is nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. It's yeah. totally wild. And I we're just harnessing it like shit. it's no big and, deal and in one everything of my, <laughs> all the time. And one of my favorite things about brushless <laughs> motors is that. Right <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anything about any of this stuff. <laughs> That's fascinating. That's the coolest really thing about electric motors, in my opinion, like obviously <clears> it's cool that you can use some power to make this thing move, like literally converting electrical energy to kinetic energy, like with no nothing in between. The greatest thing, though, is it goes the other way mm. instantly. Mm. So like the mo- yeah. let's say you want to capture that energy like now you're slowing it down. But uh, so now you're basically creating these magnetic fields that are interacting in that that interact and sorry. The interaction between, I'm struggling with words, I'm sorry. My mouth has problems. Uh, the interaction between those magnetic fields generates electricity in the wires. Basically pushing against those coils as they come through, pushing the electrons within yes. them as they're for, because it has its own force in it at the moment, and it's oh, pushing against exactly. those magnetic fields. And, oh. and that's how you're able to get power out of it, and you basically capture it the same way you generate it, and but that power can go somewhere and because it's electricity it's so easy to basically hand off that energy <clears throat> they just store it right back in the battery pack so that's why you can be in an electric car up in the mountains with say 200 miles of range left your battery is like say two-thirds full and you get down to the bottom of the mountain and you have 220 miles of range mm. you suddenly gained 20 miles because going down if you're just to go like you know balls out and just go <laughs> uh you would die <laughs> that's yeah. the point that's the moral so, of the story yeah. so you slow down by <laughs> capturing instead of using your brakes the physical brake pads you harness that that kinetic energy and store it into the battery which mm-hmm. has a byproduct of slowing you down mm-hmm. and giving you more energy 
Which is what happens when yeah. you let off the gas pedal on a Tesla, exactly. and which is why Ren never touches the brakes. Yeah, there we go. The Tesla full circle, just like the motors and the magnets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing, man. I, yeah. I did not expect to go on to a whole freaking electric motor rant. Today. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. talk about like what we're working on and cool projects, but we we're just like, talking about, talk about the Attack on Titan video. No, motors. No. <laughs> that's really cool, though, man. Yeah, I didn't. We I didn't... should talk a little bit about the Attack on Titan video. Yeah, yeah and shall we? We should, yeah. we should. We should also talk about this upcoming anime. Yes, we should talk drop. about the that. anime drop. The anime drop. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We should talk. Maybe, hopefully, if we have time, a little bit about cutscenes as well. All right. Let me talk about the anime drop real quick, and then let's talk about the Attack on Titan video. So, okay. I know not everybody who listens to the podcast is into NFTs. I mean, honestly, it's a it's a small section of our audience that's into NFTs. But the idea of being able to revisit some of these things that we have done in the past and like delve into their worlds again is really fun. Like doing that with the boss town robot for like the, the decade like NFTs that we did. And now the next drop we're going to be doing uh, next week is going to be the anime collection. And we have three anime films, anime baseball, anime fidget spinners and uh, anime self-driving cars, which are arguably some of my most favorite videos I've ever made. Yeah. But the thing about doing an NFT, like a single edition NFT, is that at the end of the day, really only one person gets to participate in that because it's a single edition. So we were trying to think of something that's a little more fun that like, that can be opened up to more people. Mm. And so we're, we, we decided to do kind of a inspiration off of like Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And we have a, basically a, a set of trading cards set in this universe of anime series that we're making. So we're, we're basically making NFT trading cards. Um, and we get to go and actually dress up these like moments and characters as like actual objects in a trading card game and stuff. It's so it's been pretty fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to people seeing it next week when we put it together. But yeah, it's it's cool. It's like going back to these videos like I didn't know how many people died in these videos. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people yeah. died in these videos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we have I like mean, it's three. An anime. Yeah, we have like three in memoriam cards. One is for Dodger, <laughs> Jake's character who dies on anime <laughs> baseball. He Dodger. sacrifices himself so that they can win the game. Uh, another one the is big, for the big game. The, the big, big game. game. Yep. Yeah. Another one is for Pup Pup the dog that dies yep. in anime self-driving oh, cars yeah. because his oh, car no. is pushed too hard. Oh, man. Jake, I just learned today that that was your dog. Yeah. yeah. Luna. 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 Yep. Yeah. Luna. Yep. <laughs> what a funny looking dog. Yeah. <laughs> well, who was the third one? Was it Mike? The third one is Z, Clint's character, who also dies. Oh, you're right. Yep. But his soul is turned into a computer. <laughs> and it's, I didn't catch this joke. I forgot about this joke in the end cards, but <laughs> he starts a family. So he's on an iPad. His girlfriend's still alive. They start a family and their baby's on an iPad. And like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that's so stupid. Uh, yeah, that's right at the end. Anime self driving cars is such a good video. Like, yeah. that was three months of my life. Like, that yeah. Was it was a very long but that was also right around the time that sam had his first kid yeah the whole oh, like well. everything about it is like perfect like frame detail perfect in that video it's like everything is great so i'm not even tooting my own, own horn like i didn't actually i didn't shoot any of it or do the effects on it but i did write it and like in a way like i feel really proud of it also like it's such a absolutely yeah. i was gone when you guys filmed it and like started doing post-production i was back for the rest of post-production but you know, you were handling most of that, uh, Ren. Yeah, vast majority of the work was Sam and I. He did, he did, he like, uh, we got the scans of the mountains out and we did all that. And then he, uh, he knew he was going to have a kid like any day. So he's just rushing to get like, he basically did all of the, the car animations and the camera work. So yeah. he actually placed all the cameras and made scenes for all that stuff. Uh, just quick and dirty, like, oh, this is sure. Um, and then it was my responsibility over the following two months to like, turn those into renders and this yeah. is still when i was like kind of a baby at octane i didn't really know what i was doing Dude, but they look so good it took a lot of work to get him to that point but yeah. yeah it was uh i'm very proud of that video too yeah it shows anyways it was just it was nice to revisit it and like look at these segments and like i've added down some really cool like trading card art one for z one oh there's some legendary items um oh. So D A D, which is Z's car. <laughs> um, <Dad>. there's, an, <laughs> there's a card for that item. Uh, another one is the the Psycho Fidget Spinner, which is the one with Psycho Crystals that, of course, can mm -hmm. drive you insane. 
Uh, the junk ball is another one, of course, from uh, anime baseball. Anyways, I could go on, but like I told, that reminded me of the dad joke in that video. <laughs> what are you broken? I'm not broken. I'm dad. That's the flavor text <laughs> on that card. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, Peter's just like mocking up some like, really cool like gold steel like depth like you know something that he feels like you could like touch it and hold mm-hmm. like in your hand. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it. It's gonna be it's gonna be sweet. Um. I'll leave it at that in terms of like talking about all the little like tidbits, but like being able to delve back into the lore of those videos and like just the richness of detail that they have has been really cool. Yeah. If, if you get if people listening to this haven't seen our anime videos, definitely go check them out. You'll dig them. So these NFTs are dropping next week. Wednesday. Next Wednesday, yeah. which is the what day? 19th. 19th. Yes. Wednesday, May 19th. Yep. Mm-hmm. Two days after the 11th anniversary of Corridor. Really? May 17th? You're right. Oh, wow. Are we oh. the 17th? Yeah. yeah. I know wow. it's the 17th because that is Carmichael's birthday, um. and it is the Norwegian independence holiday. <laughs> That's why Ren knows that it's the 17th. <laughs> well, because literally the holiday is called lived in Norway. May 17th. It's like July 4th. Oh. You know? Yeah, I lived in Norway all through middle school, so it was like every Man, year May 17th live? would come around and everyone would party. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Vietnam, too. Right? Yeah, Vietnam. That was high school. Louisiana. Yeah. Louisiana was grade school. Houston. Houston was a little bit of grade school in high school. Just a little bit. <laughs> I don't like Houston. <laughs> uh, Very humid. <laughs> Ren, how does it feel to have the Attack on Titan video? Oh, my door? goodness, dude. I am so happy with that video, but I'm also so happy it's done. <laughs> that was it's doing. Uh, it's doing great. I am very pleased with how it's doing. It's yeah. been see today's Wednesday. It went up on Sunday. It's already at one and a half million views. Every time uh, the video gets a million views, it's exciting. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Like even now, like with VFX artists React, generally getting a million views every time, like doesn't matter. It's just as exciting now as it was the first time. You know, time. it's funny. Like, I joke around <laughs> about being jaded about getting views. Like, oh, it only got a million views. <laughs> like, I'm joking. But at the same time, there's a little bit of like, okay, I was really hoping for maybe two million views. Uh, sometimes. But nonetheless, you're absolutely correct. It hit a million views. And I'm just like, hell yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> I hope it keeps going. <laughs> you know, what? it's weird that we trust like YouTube's you kind of like that's truly a million people watched it when it says a million like Facebook's you kind of like no no way yeah <laughs> Instagram you're like eh, <laughs> maybe a million people stopped at it for three and a half seconds yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's, the whole that's what <laughs> Facebook yeah. that's what Facebook measured their Facebook views as for a while yeah. right yeah. three seconds yeah <laughs> YouTube's what 10 15 I think YouTube is they no, have to watch in 15 30. seconds in but there might then be a like percentage of video watch, but it almost doesn't mm. matter because they give you watch time now. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can see engagement. Yeah. So you know it's real. Or I mean, take views away entirely. It's like wow, like you know, sixty thousand thumbs ups, a hundred thousand thumbs ups, or like you know, ten thousand comments. You're like, damn, that's like a lot of people stopped to talk yeah, about the, this, the, and engage the, with it. The which like is awesome. button is the one that always kind of makes me take a step back and go, wow. Like the, yeah. the Attack on Titan video has over 100,000 likes on it. And it's just like literally 100,000 individual YouTube accounts clicked on a button yeah. of approval. Yeah. The entire city of Santa Barbara clicked like on it. <laughs> it yeah, that, it just blows my mind. It, it, makes, it makes all the effort we put into it feel validated, you know? It's like, yeah. that's why we work hard on these videos. Yeah, um, yeah that, that whole video was a weird journey in and of itself. I was having like weird like mental health problems in the first couple weeks of it and then finally it was like all right you know what i'm getting my groove snap <laughs> break my collarbone and now i'm having to deal with this and all the weird problems that came from that um oh snap you actually oh, handled the snap. uh the co- broken collarbone pretty in stride <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you, you really did yeah. i'm is there like are breaking bones kind of routine to you at this point? No. Okay, it used to be. It used <laughs> to be. It used to handle to like it was. Broken bones. It, uh, you know, I'm honestly surprised myself. Uh, it's been a very long time since I, I've broken a lot of bones, but I used to. Like, back when I was a kid, I broke enough bones that the hospital had to, like, interview me separately from my parents. They would do bone tests to make sure that, like, I didn't have, like, fragile bones. Apparently, my, my bones are 100% normal. Uh, my bones, apparently my bones are 100% metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, they Seems interviewed like me to like, they like, do your parents hit you? 
I'm like, no. I'm like, what? Whoa. <laughs> like th- th- those kind of questions. It's so long ago that I only when I barely remember bones. like the, <laughs> the interactions. It was just one of those things where it's like the doctor would come in like to cut the cast off. Like he started giving me experimental casts. Like I was one of the first people in all of Louisiana to receive a waterproof cast. Oh, wow. And I, it was white. They didn't have colors at the time. And so my mom painted it. This was over the summer. She painted it as like an American flag. Mm-hmm. And uh, when they cut it, they cut it down like here and then around the backside and they put it up on display in, in the <laughs> hospital room, and it was there for years. Yeah. <laughs> and you had no because you went back. And I knew because I would go back, and I was like, that's mine. <laughs> Wait, but yeah, at, at the so end funny. of it, they had, a whole, they had a whole suit of armor made out of casts. That was yeah. just fine. <laughs> it could make up Now, rings. it's important to note, <laughs> so most wet. of the bones I broke were usually in my wrist, because I was very... <clears throat> Very clum- not clumsy is not quite the right word. I was very overactive and highly energetic and impulsive, and so I'd fall down a lot. And when I would fall, I would put my arm out and lock it in place. Mm-hmm. And something's got to give in those situations. Usually, it'd be a bone in my wrist would just kind of crack. Sometimes the entirety of my arm would fold backwards. Uh, I have these scars here on my arm from when they had to put some plates into my arm for that. You still have uh, plates. I lost them. I used to have, I had them all through college. I don't oh, know where they are now. I, I'm pretty sure I still have them somewhere. I just can't <clears> find them. Um, they're not in your body anymore? No, no. They had to remove them because I was a kid. I was still growing. They have oh. to remove the plates. So I had I underwent surgery to have them put in. Then like eight weeks later, I underwent surgery to have them take them out. Oh, Ugh. wow. I had like, uh. I, I bent my leg. As a, when I was like five or six, uh, uh, I was young enough that the bones were still worse than breaking it. Spring <laughs> enough, it. You they bent still, your leg. It was my it was my my shin bone here, my left shin bone. Ah. I I jumped and landed. Uh, I won't go into detail of who I landed on, but I basically like bent my, it was my sister. I bent my leg around her face. Um, oh my God. And was it, a wrestling move? No, I jumped off monkey bars. It was this, it was, we had you monkey bent, bars. What happened to her face? Her, she was fine. <laughs> she was totally fine. Oh my God. Uh, but like, it was enough that like it bent my foot, my parents were having like this going away party for one of their coworkers. It ended the whole party very awkwardly. Uh, and it was like, we always call it like a broken leg because it looks broken and freaking at, at an angle. Uh, but apparently I was young enough that it didn't actually crack or break. Whoa, and what? so the, the doctor gave my parents two options. We can undergo surgery, give them, uh, <laughs> you know, all of the, what do you call the stuff they make you go to sleep for? Uh, yeah, an- anesthetics. Yeah, anesthesia. Uh, yeah, anesthesia. Um, which is dangerous for someone his age. I was like five. Uh, it's a risky operation, but we'd be able to fix it and it'd be fine. Or I could bend his leg over my leg right now and Ooh. fix it right now. Ooh. Bend it? No. They bent it. I know they which one they chose. For sure. You poor person. Bend I like screamed <laughs> so loud. I remember the details oh of this room. God. I was five, and yet uh-huh. this room still stands out in my memory. <laughs> the doctor was like, all right, ready? Three, two, and bent my leg over his thigh like right here and just like and apparently I my mom remembers this more than me uh this I I wailed so hard that they both instantly regretted their decision yeah (laughs) but that being said I think in the end it worked out because I only had to have a cast on for like a couple months and it was like not a big deal we didn't have as it was I was already maxing out my parents healthcare coverage every year I was gonna say that man I they you, you are like a healthcare nightmare it was a problem when i was a kid but then at around the age of 11 or 12 i just stopped breaking things Mm -hmm. i think i learned how to control my impulsivity a little bit yeah and uh suddenly i stopped having problems it only took a decade yeah yeah so over the course of the following (laughs) 10 20 years i didn't really uh break much there are a few times like for instance i know now that i broke my kneecap when we were in vegas for nab because i I drunkenly tried to jump over a dividing line you know like those those thick (laughs) velvet lines that they have outside of clubs i was in the middle of a uh, of a casino and i just tried i was i was i was pretty drunk i apologize Uh, and i tried to just hop over it because there was nothing on the other side and i needed to go down this hallway so i was just like i hopped over it but my foot caught it and I ended up going up and then landing on my kneecap. And I remember complaining the entire drive home. This is like NAB 2018, I think. I, I complained the entire ride home. I was like, guys, my knee hurts. And everyone was like, shut up. <laughs> we weren't that mean. Really. No, you were not. We weren't that mean. No, I was, I was definitely exaggerating that. You were not mean at all. But it was just, I definitely got the feeling like, okay, I guess I should stop mentioning this. It really hurts. And then like months go by. Like it wasn't actually ever broken. But then uh, a friend of mine who is a doctor, I had him check it out. And he's like feeling my kneecap here and uh he's like all right this ridge 
that's what's called a bone spur. Basically, your your kneecap cracked and like bone fluid seeped <gasps> out and started forming new bone material. Gross. So, so I have like this like little ridge right. across my kneecap now. It's totally fine. It never hurts. It's it's not a well, thing. But well, huh? Yeah. Well. Anyway, so that leads to this clavicle. Ah. Uh, um, during Attack on Titan. During Attack on Titan. I so I went back to the doctor last <clears throat> week and he was very happy with the progress I'm making. The the bone was initially like overlapping a little bit. And when you say happy, like do you like clap his hands and smile or like what he had a lot of relief he was like oh, i'm so glad we made that decision that was the right call he just kept saying over and over that was the right oh, call God, that was the right call <laughs> and he's, the, the call he's referring to is not having surgery mm, mm. the whole point of coming back the second time was to like you know check up to, maybe we do need to still have surgery but uh all the shards that were there are starting to ossify and shrink a little bit there's uh the bone had stretched out so now the bone is actually at length what does ossify mean uh, uh, it hardens up. It's it's like calcifying. Okay. Is that a, it's it's to make something hard. It's like overly hardened. Gotcha. I guess. Did, okay. Brittleized. I don't know. I, I'm not exactly sure the specific definition. Wait, ossify means to turn into bone or bone tissue. Yeah, so turn into oh. bone. Okay, so it's even more tissue. related to bones than I, I thought. The first time I ever heard the term ossified bones, it was when I was reading all of the lore around the Spartans from Halo. Comes from the like oh, oh, Halo so Three came yeah. with this like bone. bonus book uh -huh. from Halsey, That's Dr. Halsey, her journal. Did you know that, Jake, yeah. or did you look that up? I just looked it up. Oh. Anyway, yeah. the Spartans had extra hard Latin. bones. <laughs> they were like bones. ossified bones. Yeah. I was like, that's so cool. I read the books, man. I knew, I knew all yeah. that shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like osteoporosis. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so anyway, uh, it's, I mean, there's not really much to it. He was glad that I don't need surgery. Uh, uh, they the bones have stretched out to now they're at length. They're still like crooked, but they're at length. They're not overlapping each other. Um, and so, yeah, that first seven days were awful. Constant pain. Uh, anytime it got cold was the worst cause I'd start shivering and shivering mm, is basically oh. just uncontrolled muscle spasms. And so every time any of these muscles would activate, they would pull on my <clears throat> collarbone and it would just be tremendously painful. Uh, after about a week, it was about seven days or so. Two days over the course of the following two days, I rapidly improved. Hmm. Far less pain, far more mobility. I could do crap like this, strength back. I could lift. I could lift a fork to my mouth, wow. yeah. and that was because the bone was actually starting to regrow just a little bit. Imagine like two sticky pads on the end of sticks, just kind of touching each other, mm -hmm. just enough that like if you're to pull on it sideways a little bit, it doesn't actually budge, but not grown enough that if I was to pull a one wheel plug oh, no. out of a one wheel accidentally yeah. uh, with the wrong arm you get blinding pain oh yeah Jake oh, we fixed your one wheel by the yeah. way <laughs> you did you had to break your re-break your clavicle to do it I, I think to. I might have actually kind of damaged my clavicle a little bit in the process and uh, now by the way from our perspective we were upstairs <laughs> and we heard a, a piercing scream coming from that and at <gasps> first me and Dean looked at each other and we're, and we're like smash <laughs> is, is it smash bros is that what's going on and then Nico comes out and then with like there's like a herd of us that comes out to check and we, we're like we hear like Ren and a couple other people down there and we're just like oh shit no <laughs> Nico's like go back oh, no. <laughs> realize it was Ren we, just in searing pain yeah mm -hmm. uh I have a third party uh charger for the one wheel it had a bad plug but it didn't occur to me that it would ever actually weld to the plugs inside the one wheel, which we think is what happened to your board, Jake, uh, which is why we couldn't remove it. We thought maybe yeah. uh, you and I, when we were trying to remove it, we thought maybe the little the springy thing on the charger plug was like stuck. That was fine. It was actually like welded. It's your board works totally fine now, by the way. It's it's all good. I've double checked it. But I tried wow. something different where I put some downward force on it and then pulled. I just happened to be holding it with my right hand at the time. Mm. And I just I wasn't thinking I was like, try I had it on both hands, but it just like. Woof, and my hand went backwards and torqued on my collarbone so hard. I literally came to minutes later and it was uh, Natalie and Christian were there and Jordan had come down the stairs. I was like, oh, man. Oh, that would have been embarrassing if other people saw me in this state. Man, I'm glad it was just you three. <laughs> man, The cool. whole office had walked the in office. there, stopped in the balcony, <laughs> looked at Ren, looked at each other and went, is he okay? And he actually went, I'm okay. And then we kind of looked at each other and went, Ooh, I, have no <laughs> okay. I have no recollection of anyone else showing up there. I just remember just blinding uh, no. pain. <clears throat> it's it's been a thing. So every now and then I'll have like a moment of like, ow, that hurt a lot. But yeah, it goes away pretty quickly. Throughout the producing of Attack on Titan, there would just be <laughs> moments where we'd be talking about a shot or about a concept and it would just go. <laughs> 
and just like sit there for a second. <laughs> it's like, okay, you gotta give him a little bit of air. <laughs> that, was, that was a constant thing that happened. You did give us a heads up though. You're like, just let you guys know at some point, I might just loudly yelp. <laughs> yep. And Jake wrote a wonderful song. <laughs> Jake wrote a wonderful song. <laughs> it's called the Ah song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. I feel like I recovered fairly well. I say recovered as if it's in the past. No, it's still very much so active. It has been, see, today's Wednesday. It'll be three weeks from tomorrow that I actually had the accident. So I'm three weeks into this and I, I feel fine enough that I can like move around fairly easily you think your bones are sticking together a little bit right now i think they're stuck enough that i can i can do stuff but i still can't like i can't wash my hair for instance oh man mm. i can't like there are times where I, like i'll lift a, a bottle of water with my right arm and i can't quite get it to my mouth <sighs> <laughs> yeah. um a little stuff like that also i still have a broken shoulder in two spots i have a chip and a break in my shoulder that is completely separate from my collarbone and the pain from that is starting to return Ooh. oh over the last week or so that's been hurting me every now and then because i get more motion back and so mm. now when i reach certain areas i hurt my shoulder and that manifests as a very different way the clavicle it's instantaneous pain very sharp very quick but almost just as quick is gone it's like it's like getting poked with a needle or something just for like a moment but the moment you take it away, it's like, okay, the pain's gone. Mm -hmm. Whereas the shoulder, <clears throat> I'll, I'll like tweak it a little bit. I'm like, uh-oh, okay, here we go. No pain yet. But over the course of five seconds, it ramps up until I'm like, okay, that hurts a lot. And mm -hmm. it sits there, and then it slowly goes down again. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because I actually have a torn labrum. It's this, the fleshy stuff. And I don't know, man. I, I, have to, I still have to have surgery on that. Yeah. yeah well. And I have to wait until this is healed before I can do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, man, how often should I one wheel now? <laughs> Should I limit it to 30 times a week? I don't know. You should wear shoulder pads, dude. You should wear like a football player's. Dude, you like... need to wear a whole suit of armor. You're not you know, one wheeling, right? <laughs> I'm not. I did get I take that back. I did get one one wheel shot for the video uh a, two weeks ago. Um it was the shot where like the bone lands on the ground and starts growing until it snaps in half. That's like across the street from my house. And so like I was like, I need to get the shot. Yeah. Do it for the shot. If I'm really careful. I can get on a one wheel and it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. and, okay I, yeah. and I did it. And felt, it was totally good, okay. I never went it's above like, like how, three how or five often miles. do you fall on the one wheel when you are just getting on? Like you rarely ever, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah, it's totally fine. It's like the biggest risk from one wheeling comes when you stop really paying like 100% attention. So like I was very hyper aware, very hyper uh, conscious of the fact that I should not be on a one wheel, but I did it anyway. And I got the shot and it was worth it. It's on the sketch shot, to yeah. stake scale. Sketch yeah. was low. Stakes were high, but stakes were medium high. Sketch pretty low though. Pretty low. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. It it was a risk I was willing to take. Yeah. I'll put Can it that way. Can we start referring to the stakes in terms of how well you cook a steak? <laughs> yes. <laughs> medium, medium to medium so, well. And sketch is the quality, the quality of the cut. It's like where's that yeah, steak from? It's pretty yeah. sketch. <laughs> sketch is the quality of the cut and the <clears throat> and the risk of it and the and the consequence is like. Uh, the more the more well done it is, the less consequence. So so me doing something that's both risky and severe consequences would be like, I'm gonna take out this tenderloin and get it real, real rare. Like yeah, a real a rare, rare a rare tenderloin would be a rare, rare skirt steak or something. <laughs> a rare skirt steak. <laughs> All right. Hey, yeah. I don't know how well that yeah, so I so I realize that I've been talking a lot about like my my bone history which is something I've talked about before <clears throat> I apologize for all you guys who are rolling your eyes like ugh alright here we go again well, Ren's yeah. bones um, again Ren's flexible bones <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no I, I think the attack on titan video went well uh, I think the the oh yeah I stopped pay, taking painkillers about a week after the break it was about seven days after because I had to drive to work the next day Jenna was going to mm. be working so I didn't want to take an uber and I was like I think I'm well enough I don't need to take these pain meds anymore so I stopped taking them and I was able to drive because you're not supposed to drive when you're on pain meds um, specifically that I think I was on Percocet anybody who watched the podcast from two weeks ago sees why you're not supposed to drive on pain meds. <laughs> yeah. is this very like aloof yeah, it's you're probably like, oh. good you stop taking them because like, I'm, i was i was concerned and fearful about the addiction aspect of of things and i'm like mm. if you take them longer than like 10 days like it's you start it. setting in like oh i kind of want them and it's not it's not good <laughs> oh yeah 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 yep. uh yeah 
uh, what was I going with that? The biggest problem I've had are just these really intense knots that I'm getting on my shoulder blade now. And I don't know if it's from being at a desk in a certain <clears throat> posture, but they're really bad knots. Like they, they're, they're pinching these nerves that are going up my neck and I've tried a whole bunch of things to get rid of them. I have like this little like freaking massage stick. I have a massage like Theragun type deal. I have a, a tennis ball that I lean against on the wall. Uh, heat pads. I'm trying yeah. a whole bunch of stuff. They all work relatively well. But the break I had over the weekend helped a lot. Nice. I don't have the knots anymore. Uh, where was I so going? So Attack, Attack on that? Titan. Attack, <laughs> yeah, Attack on Titan. Yeah, yeah. We're still talking about yeah that. sorry. <laughs> it's all about me. Am I right? <laughs> it's all about bones. <laughs> I mean, Matt, this was a uh, this is the first time I legitimately had someone else help so much with the edit, and you you came too, and like really lot, brought a lot of uh, your own personal spice to the video. Yeah, Dude, and, it was and, a freaking blast, man. I'm, I had, I had so a fun, fun time working on this you. video. It was yeah. a good video. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you mentioned uh, in the behind the scenes the uh, keep moving forward video that Daniel made, which is a great video. If you're on the website, yeah, definitely check that, check out. that one check out. That out yeah. um, that was really good. You well mentioned like trying to video that just went out. <laughs> oh my god, that's so funny! I just watched that oh. earlier. <laughs> so I have not funny. watched that yet. Yeah, yeah, so would, funny. Yeah. Uh, but you mentioned that you have to like find the balance between adding your own spice but not going too far because it's just going to be a waste of time anyway. I'm wondering if maybe yeah. next time. Open the gate, dude. I can open the gate. <laughs> like I'm wondering if, I like, next time, like, I wonder, like, obviously, we still, I still got to keep like some of that structure uh, in place. But yeah. like, if you have an idea let's, for like a like a zesty like let's, zesty let's garnish, let's jam a little earlier in the process. Like in the I maybe know not you, have I a know, broken bone in the middle yeah, of it. Don't have yeah. a broken bone first of all, and then also like, yeah, I know you are. You just kind of like you know get your horse blinders on and really you know sit down and write all by yourself, but. Having someone else there at least to review some of those. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, a, bounce, it's a thing. It's a thing. I'm, I'm kind of. It's like for as much pride as I take into being flexible about what I do, I'm still very much so stubbornly <laughs> uh, resistant to to my ways. You know, it's yeah. like uh, having you film all of the little handwriting things. Like I've always done that <laughs> as the final step because I have the context of the entire video. Yeah. Here, like, all right, this is everything that's going to be there. What are all the bits that need to be illustrated with with numbers or words or some uh -huh. sort of that thing? Uh, but this time we started that way sooner in the process. Yeah. And I was not happy about having to do that way sooner in the process. But ultimately, I'm very happy we did. Sure. You don't have to scramble to do that at the yeah, last second. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Can you imagine having to do that on Friday or on Saturday? <laughs> Or Sunday <laughs> morning. I ended up, you know, we finished Friday and I was oh, yeah, like, this guys, is... this is great. We are done. <laughs> like, we are yeah. done on time on a Friday. Yeah. And then I ended up staying till midnight on that Friday trying to finish this shot and, and a few other things. And I was like, oh, I, I'm done tonight. So I, I, I ended up working Saturday through Parsec on my home computer. It was very casual. It was the chillest work day I've ever had, just casually working. And then like dinner comes around, I'm still not done with the final Titan shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like 8 p.m. And I'm like, okay, I think I got, I, I think I'll be done with this shot in another like one or two hours. <laughs> There's not too much left to do with this shot. Seven hours later, <laughs> it is four in the morning, four or five in the morning. And I'm now finishing the VFX shot, and I'm like happy with the VFX shot. And now I've got to drop it into the edit and sound design it, oh, make yeah. it work with the music, yeah. and a couple other <laughs> things I'd forgotten to tidy up in the in the in the whole video because a lot of Saturday was spent like uh, like uh, levelating audio and stuff like that. It was fine. I got the video uploaded at like 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Three hours before the launch, and it was like, <sighs> you know. I tried really hard to not have to do this this time. I tried really <laughs> yeah, hard to make yeah. sure that this wasn't a thing. Yeah. And I thought I was on top of schedule every single day. Like, I was actually really proud of being on top of the schedule. Yeah. And inevitably, I still ended up having to do <laughs> extra stuff. Just do it. Uh, anyway, it's one of those things that I actually ironically didn't mind in the least because this was a passion project. It was like, I would much rather put in the extra time to make it at least what it was trying to be rather than like, you know what? This is like kind of a critical shot of the entire video, but yeah, we'll cut it. I already cut shots from the fight scene. We had like a whole bunch of extra shots that I had filmed. I actually went back and got pickups. I filmed over the weekend later to get pickups for these extra shots that I pretty much immediately turned around and was like, I'm cutting them. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have time to do all these shots. I'm, I'm going to cut them right now. This still works without them. Well, you know, me and, you know, speaking for myself, but also for the other millions of people who watched it, million and a half people, uh, the amount of passion that you guys put into it really shows, and it's a really fun video to watch. So, 
I'm, I'm glad yeah. you guys put. I feel like that stuff really pays it. off when you really like the project. That it you're does. You on. know, I feel like we're in the middle of YouTube changing again. Mm -hmm. You know, remember how it like changed way back in the day from views to watch time. And that was when we saw the rise of all the, the let's play makers and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then like it, it was it changed again since then. Uh, when it went to more like audience engagement rather than watch time for like driving the <clears> algorithm <throat> I think now like and we've been in it for the last year or two I feel it's been more like YouTube's uh, Rewarding higher quality content more than they used to that's why you see mark rober uploading a video once a month And it gets 30 million views mm -hmm. granted well, that's because mark to, rober is a, a unique Exception because he's brilliant <laughs> in everything he does, but like <laughs> we're starting to see more of that. We're starting to that see more be, rewards. That can be marked by that can be marked very closely by the change in the in the on the from the YouTube product team when they went from view based reward to then watch time based reward to now what they call viewer satisfaction, which yes. is what they started about two years ago. Yes. Which is a combination of all of of it's a combination of time interaction. Uh, comments sharing like how, how how well you are using and consuming those videos as part of your overall experience on the site yeah so it's a lot more complex and that's what they that's the overall term for it that they use now so i feel like it's very evident when viewers watch one of these kind of videos it's like oh wow you put a lot of effort and time into this this is not a a typical video that we see week to week uh and i think the audience response to that is recognized by the youtube algorithm uh, the yeah. satisfaction that uh, we've talked about and and I think that's what helps drive the success of those those videos because it's like Trying to make these videos like two three years ago. This is what we we're going through with corridor back in the day like five four or five years ago It's like mm -hmm. we put like a month long of effort into this one video and we're like this video is awesome We're so proud of it. we put it up and it's like it gets 300,000 views. It's like <laughs> cool <laughs> I mean, I, to I be thought fair, this one would pop off. To be fair, there's an element of that. This is like this is the old old school YouTube and me talking. It's like you get the views you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> sure, if sure. You get good the enough, views you just you get the views get you there. deserve, kid. But this was this was in that, that middle ground when YouTube was was all in on the watch time things. This is yeah. like when we that was why we started the vlogs. It was yeah. like we can't just keep producing three to six minutes a month of content. We have to have some sort of way to continue pumping out more time. And that was literally how the vlog was born. And to be and fair, now like the format that of Corridor back then is like what would work on TikTok or Instagram these days. Yeah. And, um, well, not uh, I maybe, mean, kind of. It's like we were a little bit longer form than like the TikTok form. And we we're like a little short form for YouTube. It was weird. Yeah. But I really liked being able to do all those cool concepts. Yeah. But you know what? Everybody's like, man, is a Corridor channel dead? What's happening on the Corridor channel? You guys haven't uploaded anything since uh, mm. I guess it was well, about about well, well, about that. Well, well, well. Guess what? We got a Corridor video coming out in like two or three days. I don't know what day this Ooh, podcast is Saturday. coming out. Yeah, it's, it's coming out Saturday. Today. Oh, yeah, we can tell everybody listening. It's coming. We have yeah. a new video coming out on Saturday. It's called The Cut Scene. Yeah. I mean, name subject to change. Because that often happens <laughs> yeah. at is 5 a.m. Is that the 15th? The... I don't know. That it's is Either way, Sam has been cranking 15, along on yeah. this really cool... Uh, piece that's all done inside of unreal so the whole thing is animated um it's been an exploration into the world of like a little bit of like cartoons i mean this it's not that kind of a hand-drawn cartoon but it is fully animated so it's almost it's kind of a cartoon in a way uh it all takes place within a video game and it's really interesting to watch like it it, it hits different than like a live action video you know interesting yeah. i've been specifically avoiding it. i wasn't involved in the early yeah, uh concept big, of it and then the production of it and like sam wanted to bring a couple <clears throat> of people in to like you know review it and give some notes and kind of just see the progress of it and i like i like him and i locked eyes and i was like I'm not going to watch. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to satisfy you so well on Friday. <laughs> well, well, that's a satisfying. Your viewership is going to be so satisfactory. So just wait. The first time I see this will be kind of the, like the final product. Yeah. And you know, it's a, the big underarching thing here. I think mean, this weird. is not us just trying to make a story out of things. Like this is an actual corridor thing. You know, Sam has a certain quality, a threshold of quality he needs to hit for him to be able to go out and do local zero. And you know, we really, we really hold ourselves to accomplishing the things that we said we would do on the website. You know, the green light shows we're going to, we're doing them, <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. like Kickstarter where you can decide whether or not you want to after the fact. <laughs> well, <laughs> you can just take wow. money and leave. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, local zero, which we have a story that I think we're all really jiving on. We want to do it justice. And if Sam can't get the technology to work, 
Like we're not we we're not going to do it until we can get the technology working, and that means, you know, having characters that legitimately convey emotion and having workflows that legitimately work, and not having like visual errors just blatantly in the center of your screen. If a character glitches out, you you can't have that. Like you need to set a you know a threshold of quality for yourself. Um, and up until this point, Sam hasn't felt like we've gotten there. Like the closest thing we got was the handsome Squidward video, and then that's like a super compact mm-hmm. like approach. And even then it didn't actually fully work. Like, we managed to hide the problems really well. Yeah, and you get, like, a bit of that, that like, jankiness sometimes when you're looking at, like, a human face that is just, like, very inherently uh, uh, limited. Human. You know, yeah, like, the, limited, the, yeah. the, the, what was it, the video game characters react video? Mm-hmm. Like, Sam's been, like, steadily experimenting nonstop with this tech for, like, well over a year at this point. Yeah, it's like a two-year endeavor now at yeah, this point. Yeah, uh, just slowly learning a lot more, slowly getting a lot better, just constantly, like... You know, he's doing it right. You know, he's he's learning and in, in, in experimenting through this whole time. But he has these goalposts that are projects that he's completing. And yeah. you learn from those projects. That's one of the most valuable things about the Corridor Crew channel to like, at least to me as an artist, as a person is mm-hmm. it gives us it gives me goalposts. It gives Sam goalposts. It gives you all of us goalposts. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. when we're making a Corridor Crew video, it doesn't have to be a year's worth of effort into one video. You can take chapters of this effort and in themselves there are stories and put those out as quarter crew videos. Dude, I, I feel cabin fever if I'm trying to work on the same project for too long. Like yeah. that anime self-driving cars video, that three months by the end of it, I hated it. I hated <laughs> everything about it. I wanted to not ever touch another CG car again in my life. <laughs> and you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't know about it, but like my, my point was that like I was just like, I'm so ready to work on anything else. Please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I feel that too. It's weird. I'm We're a little spoiled by like the ability to just have variety in our lives. From I know, YouTube. right? Yeah. Anyways, uh, I, I'm diverging from what I'm trying to get to here, which is, ladies and gentlemen, Sam's finally done it. He's done it. He's hit the quality <laughs> threshold. It. Really? After yeah. this, we can yeah. make Local Zero. This, uh, I knew nothing about this video, very little about it before watching it today. And uh, it's kind of like uh, insane. It's kind of insanely <laughs> cool. Um, I don't know much about it. I've seen like every now and then Sam will post like a little video clip on Discord, just kind of like showing it, and like I'll check that every now and then. I'm like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> it's it's about what in the hell is that a, boy doing? It's a cutscene video. It's about yes. video game cutscenes. That's yes. all I'll say about it. That's about the extent of what I know. Yeah, and how the rules change. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Now this was acted out by you and Sam, right? Mm-hmm. You guys spent a day in those mocap suits and mm-hmm. just like. Did all the the choreography voice acting? Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's all in there too. Cool choreography. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like I mean, blocking, just, like you know. Well, yeah. It's, there's. It's nice. Like when you're doing an animation, it's fun because you get to boil down like the true essence of like storytelling in a way. And it's live action has great things about storytelling too. Like there's a certain way you capture performances and photography in live action that's unparalleled in any other medium. Um, but like in terms of doing the the motion capture and the voice acting. It's it's very much about making sure you have clear and clean communication of what you're trying to do in the story. And then when you're doing like multiple takes, there's no continuity to worry about. Like you you do a take until you feel like you get it. And then that take is saved in the computer. And that's the take you use. And you can film it from one angle, another angle, another angle. And you can get as much coverage of that take as you want. And you know when you get into the edit that you'll never have to cut around continuity or angles or lines or weird things like that because every shot is basically a perfect shot yeah. <laughs> of this yeah. perfect, you know, ideally perfect performance that you picked out. Yeah. But the, the other thing that like from doing these other projects, that it's informed Sam a lot on this and it's also helped me wrap my head around like what works in terms of filmmaking. I mean, I'm not a pro by any means, but like what I'm figuring out is that unless you want to go real hard into the world of animation, which we actually don't, we want to make sure we're able to deliver on like a uh, getting content out there where that matches the pace that we can write stories. Um, you know, you need a system that works. And what Adult Swim has done a lot for their cartoons was it, cartoons, which is basically like two or three people riffing with each other, almost doing like semi-scripted improv theater, and then like taking just the cheapest approach to animating that. You know, like you know any of the like the Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, or like Sea Lab, yeah. which are like the most like rudimentary. Like they're literally just recutting other people's <laughs> animation to like lip sync. It's basically a podcast with like recut animation on top of it. <laughs> um, realizing that like that's the essence that we needed to bring to to virtual production stuff hmm. for it to be compelling and like work is I think something that we Sam really tried to realize with uh, the cutscene. 
you know, it's it's me and Sam acting with each other, dynamically riffing and improving, and basically taking a little bit of the scripted stuff and bringing a little bit of our experience of like filming on the corridor crew channel, where you're mm-hmm. sometimes running a bit and kind of like feeling yeah, it out and trying to hit yeah, jokes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it worked. Like it, it totally it, it, does. There's vibrancy to the characters, you know, which yeah. uh, if we pursued pursued more of it in the future. I feel like ideally we bring in voice actors who can find that same vibe. But it yeah. was really fun. Yeah. It's exciting. I it's like I remember you had your hesitations uh late last year about uh Unreal as a technology about whether it's something we should like yeah. It, whether it's worth putting effort into like and I and I I feel like you've come around and you're like you you see its potential now with what we can do. I think I I think I see its potential, but I think I I put my finger more on like what it's good for doing like, okay sure yeah because there's that question like man should i be like writing stories for like filming in unreal should we like really be investing in this or like should i be like going back to live action because we haven't really shot any live action stuff because of the pandemic that's well that's why yeah. the corridor channel has been so quiet literally the last quarter video we made was the dominoes video yeah and that was basically oh, pretty sure it well, was right yeah well that's the last one we shot but after that one you monster released Oh, that's and true. Tactical three loads released. Right, which were so yeah. we actually had a pretty good last year. It just ended in August. We had you know dominoes. We had tactical three loads. We had you monster. I think we had uh, the the clayface like ghost hunters clayface video, video yeah. as well. Oh, that was the beginning of the video. The beginning of the year. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, we had some videos come out, but the pandemic definitely slowed things down. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah. thinking about like how do I want to create films and videos coming going forwards? Like I've realized that Unreal is not the place to go if you want to do crazy action. You know, Unreal is not the place to go if you want to do, like Sam says, precision filmmaking, mm. where it's like, you know, a guy holds a katana up to another guy's neck. Um, Unreal hmm. is the place to go if you want, like, character-based theater against crazy backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Unreal is the place to go for crazy <laughs> costumes. You know, it's crazy environments. It's having an interesting dialogue scene that ideally is flavored up by like spontaneity and improv yeah. in a crazy setting with crazy looking characters. Um, but at, at the end of the day, it's really just your voice acting that's going to drive the story and the rest of it's just cool things to look at. I mean, I think of like Red versus Blue, for instance. Yeah. yeah. One of my, one of my favorite all time shows of like all time. Uh, <laughs> granted, you know, I'm talking about like my high school days here. Uh, the first several seasons it was like literally the funniest stuff. And really when it came, what it came down to is like, it was just really good writing, really good banter between mm-hmm. these voice actors who already have a rapport. But the backdrop was a Halo multiplayer map. Yeah. Like literally just Halo with, the, oh, you point the gun down far enough, the heads look up. And now <laughs> if you bring the gun up a little bit, the head goes down. So if yeah. you bob it back and forth, like it looks like they're talking. <laughs> and like that, they made an entire, they're on like season 18 now, I think, of Red vs. Blue. They're still going. They made an it's entire a, like hundred, multi-hundred person company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, seriously. that was exactly. Yeah. Rooster Teeth yeah. has become a huge uh, entertainment like thing um and it has evolved a lot over the years but it all started with red versus blue it all started with just some dudes reading a very good script and just throwing a random arbitrary background it just happens to be halo yeah uh yeah. but because it was halo they could shoot each other with tanks they could stand in these weird backdrops it was cheap filmmaking because it was just there yeah our minds just want an image to like give us grounding and help us lay the framework for our imagination as the story is being told you know yeah, okay. Like a, a film is about like looking at a person and going, I wonder what they would be feeling right now. What would I be feeling if I was in their shoes in this situation? I would be feeling this. Maybe they're feeling this. Like, it's the same thing. It's still about triggering your imagination. And like when you get into cartoons, it becomes even more like symbol based, like, you know, happy face. It's like, okay, that character's feeling happy. I wonder if I would feel happy. In this. <laughs> like, you know, it's like you're, you're <laughs> just trying to, you're just trying to get people to put their imagination in this world and you're giving them as much structure as they need to do that. Like even just like AI generated images with their like dreamlike wackiness and surrealist look. Like if you still if you wrote a book and you just stuck one of those on every page that kind of vibed with like what yeah. you're reading, it's like even if it's just abstract colors and shapes, you'd be like, Yeah, dude, I'm feeling this. Like it's like yeah, having yeah. it's it's the closest like soundtrack music, like background orchestrated music to like movies is literally that. It's abstracted sounds that trigger emotions to help you just like feel and vibe with where things are going. It's just giving you construction. Be like, you should feel sad. Yeah. Here. This is a sad moment. You should feel sad. Okay. Now this is an exciting moment. You should feel excited. And you're like, yeah, okay. I'm feeling excited. I would definitely feel excited if I was in this situation. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a fascinating comparison. I hadn't considered that. Yeah. It's kind of like boiling down just the essence of emotion and performance like yeah. in, in this like face cap and, and mocap. Um, yeah. It's just yeah, all about, building structure yeah. it's, it's weird though it's like because you can go really janky with it 
But where, sure. what's the jankiness that's okay, and what's the jankiness that distracts you and pulls you out? You know, it's like it's like the rules of the world. Like these these characters are in a video game. Like they're not photo real at all. You know, you're not looking at a person. Their emotions are a little wacky, but there are emotions, and so it's yeah. more like the way I'm seeing it is like you know the character needs to be happy at the right time. But the happiness can have the fidelity of a Sharpie marker drawn on happy face. Like, it mm-hmm. doesn't matter how good the happy face looks. It matters if it's the right time for the happy face. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like cutscenes is the perfect application for Unreal, though. Yeah. Because it is a game engine. It is. An and we're game, making yeah. a cutscene. Like, it's a cutscene. Yeah. So it, it because <laughs> of that, it's like, for in a weird way, it's grounded yeah. to that world like it's very it, it's hard to say like something is grounded when it's a completely you know computer generated world but like it is because it's you know it's you're immersed in, in a world that you're familiar with which is a cutscene yeah and now let's take it and spend it's it one on of those, like little serendipitous things and in local zero works the same way like it also ha- play takes place in a video game and in a futuristic yeah. video game and like the idea that like maybe we'll have a character that's literally just not like you don't wear a mocap suit but you just use a, a controller and the person's then being doing voice acting and they just play the character literally by moving a character on screen with basic third person controls because that person in real life hasn't bought the fancy vr suit yet you know so you have like the crazy mocap characters and you have the one guy who's still just doing like basic third person like you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. Around. but you still have in real life you have an actor doing it you know and they have their microphone and you have people in mocap suits and they're just watching the screen and interacting with their character yeah, using sure, the controller sure. you can just all the different tiers of like video game aesthetic it buys you that freedom but yeah i'm really psyched for local zero like part of me is like oh man we should like take this out there and like pitch it and it's like no 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 just make it <laughs> just make it. it if it's good People will dig it and it can grow from there if people want more. Yeah, we can always you can always expand upon the first iteration of it. Yep. Easily. Just go out there and make it. We say it a lot, so we've got to practice what we preach. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So cutscenes is coming out this weekend. Local Zero is coming out uh, later. Yeah. There is no date on Local Zero yet. No yeah. yeah. But it, it but we is... are I mean we're working on it. Like what's the yeah. general this is idea... part of working on it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. That is true. That is true. I I I, I believe that. What's the general uh, hope for releasing Son of a Dungeon? Timing wise, yeah. Um, I I think August. August. Okay. Here's, Sep- here's where we're September, at. September maybe. <laughs> at the risk, like <laughs> I don't, we're we don't want to like give yeah. dates per se to disappoint people, but we also don't want it to take forever because right. I mean, you know, the longer we take to get these shows out, is the longer until we can get another show out. You know. Yeah. What, um, I, what I told Carmichael is, if it comes out in October, we need to be asking ourselves with specificity, why is this happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, so. It, it's yeah. I feel like it's moving along pretty well so far. Yeah, it is of, moving. Yeah, Jake, why don't you tell like for the people listening, just tell us where are we and what are we doing with it? We've gone through every episode almost cut now. There's one more no. There's, All the episodes have been at least well, got I, a pass I'm on. I'm on four and yeah, it's Matt's, close. Yeah, Matt's on four and, and he's close, and Nat Nat's on six. <laughs> and after that, that's first draft on all. Well, eight then, episodes. Eight one hour episodes, right? Yeah. Eight some hour episodes. They're oh not necessarily God. one hour. Some are longer yeah. than an hour. Well, I mean, think about <laughs> it. We filmed two episodes a day for eight hours a day. It's, <laughs> it's like be, each it's episode has be, four hours of content behind them. It's gonna yeah, be somewhere between eight. It's gonna be somewhere between eight and nine hours of content total as a finished product. So this is the, so, this is a big deal. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest thing we've ever done in terms of like runtime and yeah. Yeah, and, and quality. Um, I do know Nat has made a pass on the final two episodes at the very least. But yeah. there's a very there's a big difference between like a pass on something and actually like a fine edit. So so now after that, then Carmichael goes in. He's working on draft two of things. Matt and Natalie will probably also go in and work on draft two. And then we lay in all the markers for all the effects. And then we go, okay, is this where we want to have our effect scenes? And then we find gets final sign off on that. Then that goes into exporting all those scenes for the actual filming of the green screen photography. Then you have to take all that green screen photography and now comp it all into mm-hmm. eight to nine hours of content so Wild. each yeah. door we walk through it's like it's like we're crossing giant mountainous valleys you know mm-hmm. yeah a- a- and there's only like two left but they're huge 
and you know start um, walking the, yeah we're just <laughs> we're just walking man yeah <laughs> we're getting there yeah and we don't exactly know how that workflow is gonna go once we start like having to do the live action stuff we might try to shoot yeah. it on a light stage Really? Yeah. All we right. realized that, that might be the perfect application. I think it would be the perfect mm. application for yeah. some of the shots. Yes. Some of the shots. Yeah. Well, okay. the idea is that we are able to photo scan the entire uh, set, whatever, what do you call the stage? Map. The, table. the map. The map. You know, the table, yeah. the map. Uh, so we have detailed models of pretty much everywhere we were, and we're just going to scale it up and put ourselves in, in those scenes, filming right. us against a green screen. I, uh, we've been experimenting with various ways in order to kind of help streamline that process. The idea being that there's going to be a lot of this footage. Yeah. So we need a quick and easy way. Uh, maybe like we do an auto tracking phone thing and dump it into Unreal. So it's just all <laughs> real time. You get the shot and it's all there. Uh, Sam quick, was thinking more you're so. You're talking about CamTrack AR when you talk about the auto tracking phone thing. Yes. Right? Yeah. We've talked about CamTrack AR and just for the people listening, on the most recent uh, Apple like event in their big promotional video, okay, yeah, this is they cool. featured <laughs> Josh Davies and CamTrack AR as like one of the things for the iPad Pro, which is yeah. So cool <laughs> that they got this like gonna be straight up a big, a, yeah. A big like, you know, anytime you watch an Apple event and you're like, all right, they bring on this new company and like the CEO of that company is talking about their new game, their new app or whatever. Like Josh was that guy. Yeah. With CamTrack AR. Which is super cool. Oh. CamTrack AR, I like, I've been using it a lot. I used it in, I used it a couple different times in the Attack on Titan video with mm -hmm. mixed results. It's, I, I'm having mixed results. I'll put it that way. What kind of phone are you using? iPhone 12 Pro Max. Oh, really? Like, the basically the nicest use. one. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's weird. Like, uh, the whole, like, that whole one-take scene with uh, the scale of the humans, uh, we filmed that with the camera on a gimbal because CamTrack AR spits out the raw image mm -hmm. from and the shaky. sensor that it's like, oh, wow, yeah, iPhones do a lot of post-processing to their videos, mm -hmm. including stabilization, uh, color, all this other stuff. So that's why that footage looks a little less good compared to everything else is because it's like the raw sensor. Anyway, the idea is that this is one long shot. We don't have to camera track it because it's already being camera tracked while we'd go through it. But the track was awful. It did not oh, no. work. And I think it's because uh, we we didn't like reset the track between takes. And so mm -hmm. like it got bloated but ended up being super easy to track in after effects literally just one button and the yeah. entire minute and a half take was tracked i was like yeah. oh, okay great yeah, yeah. for I, I i'm finding more uses for cam track ar like animating things than actually solving a camera see i feel like cam track ar is going to prove its use when we're on a green screen and we don't want to deal with tracking markers it still reads the image though but with lidar it definitely helps it's like it's i don't know it's strange it's still doing some I mean, contextual like gyros in it too like it needs features to track, which you will have, generally speaking, you're filming on a green screen, regardless of whether or not there's tracking features on the green screen explicitly. Um, but I, in my test, pointing it at a, a raw green screen, the points have stuck. And so I, I do like the idea of filming on a green screen and then not worrying about tracking markers on the green screen at all. So, but that said, Matt, you've obviously been really close to the Son of a Dungeon edit. How are you feeling about the story and the edit? And those it's a things? lot of fun. It's a yeah. lot of fun. Um, I haven't been to as close as Nat has because mm -hmm. I've only worked on one and a half episodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or we one keep, and we keep, three fourths. We keep asking Matt to work on it and then going, oh, wait, wait, <laughs> like wait. We need you to work else. on this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been on a bunch of other stuff. So, um, yeah. Uh, it, the main thing being the Attack on Titan video that took away a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, from from the perspective of you know i'm taking episode two and episode four cutting it down to an hour uh it's a lot of fun it's a lot of fun to watch um i think the dynamic between between all of you and the characters is super fun um and it's gonna be i'm looking forward to you know to seeing where any uh any events stand out from the episode that you worked on Oh, dude, the sports ball game is so much fun. <laughs> I actually didn't edit that either, but I had to watch it because it was so fun. When because I, I th to just for, for some perspective, sports I did ball. I did shoot the whole thing, so I was that there. Is true. I was there the whole time, so I know the story. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That sports ball game was so much fun. <laughs> I just didn't. I didn't think that you guys would actually play the game, and so it's very unexpected when it happens. And uh, I, I love it. I don't so, think even we expected to actually start yeah. playing the game. It's like, oh, I guess. We're, and then, all right, we're yeah. doing it. And then, and then I didn't realize that Sam had had all these rules in place. Like he had actually <laughs> figured out what the game was. And but he didn't tell us the rules until he, he started didn't tell you the it. rules. He didn't until... even tell us what the game was. He was just like sports the whole yeah, time. We're all yeah. like, yeah, sports. It's funny. No, it's not sports. 
sports it's sports ball sports it's ball sports you're right, ball you're right. Game. Yeah. 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 yeah and it's like oh yeah by the way i actually invented an entire sport and made up yeah. all the rules for it and yeah just and in case works. you guys decided to start playing yeah. a game it totally works in D and with the rules and everything and so. we killed our opponents <laughs> just murdered them, just murdered them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. i mean uh, spoilers <laughs> seriously a lot yeah, of fun. no more spoilers yeah, yeah, spoiler territory yeah. there. It's okay. But, in August, people will forget about yeah, it. No yeah, no one's gonna yeah. remember this. <laughs> There's so much. It's very dense, guys. So that, a lot it, happens. That's a very so minor much spoiler. Yeah. yeah. I will There's just say one word of hype. Microwave. 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 One more word of hype. Lehman's tiny hut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The last word when it comes to Lehman's. Lehman's. Yeah. Yeah. It I really Lehman's. hope we make some sort of shirt. Hut. If it ain't Lehman's, it ain't a hut. <laughs> Get 40% off your own Lehman's hut. We yeah. have been All chatting right. for a while. This yeah, has been, been a long yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, I think this is home. the longest one we've ever done. Chunky boy. How long has it been since the start? 145. Like we're going, wow. We're like an Almost hour two hours 40. in. Yeah, Damn. Hour 45. It's 7 p.m. right now. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on your long road yeah. trips or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Hope we can hope help you're you guys. on a long road trip. Get through the yes. days. Hey, oh, did yeah, you know that if. Play us some uh, a guitar that is suppressed so we can't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you hear this? Barely. I hear like a. <laughs> Christian can hear it. Nothing coming through. Wait, you gotta sing that. If now, you Jake. play the music, you will feel emotion. <laughs> if you play the music, you will feel emotion. <laughs> If you play the music, <laughs> it's just you Jake may not himself. hear the music. <laughs> you may only hear my voice if you're hearing me through headphones. <laughs> oh my god. It's really weird. It's, it's really so weird. such a good job. So and weird. I'm like freaking out about something that no one else can yeah, experience. No, this. Yeah, they're like, if you turn off your noise suppression in Discord, we'll be able to hear your guitar. But oh man. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it, yeah, wow. It's so that crazy that it Because I can hear the effort of your strumming in your voice, but there's no strumming in <laughs> the audio yeah like That's, it separates a guitar and your voice somehow that is some pretty insane technology actually yeah. <laughs> like that i did not know great. that was a feature yeah. in discord i knew they had noise suppression but like i don't know they <laughs> literally clean out <laughs> yeah. live Scott guitar while you're playing it and singing yeah that is pretty amazing anyway thanks guys that was fun yeah, yeah good so much fun man we dived into a lot thanks for listening yeah. everybody everybody's listening to the podcast thank you so much really yeah. appreciate you spend some time with us and we'll see you in the next one Laters. Bye. 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 Three, two, Bye. one. Ah!